We've been playing Minecraft for quite a while, and during this time, we've created some amazing builds. For example, the time we built a whole city in the nether. Or what about the time we tried to build all the way to Buildite, and we achieved it? Or well, this season, we were building a big bridge and a city on top of a bridge over the void. And even though Minecraft has llamas in minecarts moving around in circles, it's not enough. You see, the one big thing Minecraft always needed was a bit more movement. And that is why I decided it's time for a brand new modded adventure built around the Create mod. Well, hello there and welcome. <laughs> and <laughs> this terrain's already breathtaking. So welcome to the new Create series where we're just going to be building an awesome Create city, factory, whatever. We're going to be creating something with Create. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really excited. We do have a bunch of mods in here and we will discuss them as we go. There's a village which is part of a mod as well. And as you guys can see the terrain, we're using the TerraLift data pack and the terrain just generation is amazing. I love it. I love it so much. So we need to do a bunch of things before we can really set out on this adventure. Oh, there's another one. I do believe this is from Alex Mod. Yeah, that's fantastic. So I'm going to gather all the basic resources before we start our adventure. And then we'll talk a bit more about the mod pack. Just, just, just look at this animal. <laughs> We've got kangaroos in Minecraft. Oh, that is so cool. And that is one thing I think the game lacks quite a lot of is just a lot more life, a lot more animals. But anyway, um, we got those. We got some basic stone tools going and what i also did is on this mountain we've got these little exposed pockets of iron so i've just been mining those and as well as some of the coal and we already got quite a decent amount of iron and stuff which is not bad 13 iron ingots so we're going to get into the iron tools a lot faster than what i thought but that's all good so i think what i need to do is maybe kill a few sheep get a bed and go explore that village because that looks epic. So while we're running towards that village, I thought it might be a good time to talk about the mod itself. Uh, like mentioned, this is not my mod pack. I did not create the mod pack. I did modify it, however, by adding the world generation, changing that up a bit. That is mine. But the original design of the mod pack is a like-minded content creator named Mr. Beardston. And he had the same idea of being able to play create and just improving minecraft in general so i will link him down in the description so go check him out um if you're interested in the mod pack he has it over on his discord so head on over to his channel go to his discord and support him he really deserves it an amazing content creator but yes village um we found a village i need food so i need to grab some of the hay and hopefully they have hay oh, hey, over there over there okay so i'm gonna head up there it's turning tonight and another one of the mobs mods we have in here is the sleeping bag which is allow which allows us to just pop it down take a nap and just go again without it setting our spawn point which is fantastic and another mod i straight one straight want to jump into is backpack backpacks we've got backpacks on here so if we go and type backpacks you can see we've got a variety of a bunch of upgrades and that's from the mod sophisticated backpacks so while we're in town we need to see if we can gather all these resources make a backpack because our inventory is already filling up and we just we just got started so let's just see that again so we need string chest so chest isn't a problem string and leather well i was about to go on an adventure to find some string but then i saw this mall see this is a great uh village yeah yeah create village and in here, we've got a mill. And if I'm not mistaken, if I put wool in here, it will turn it into string. And if we do that, then we have enough leather. And then I just need to craft myself a chest. And that's how we're going to get a backpack. So we need two of those that will create a chest for us. And now we just need to wait for the string. And I do believe we need four. Yeah, let's chuck that over there. Four string. And can we craft the backpack? Yes, we can. So now we have a backpack and we can place all our unnecessary stuff that we don't want to keep on us at the moment 
right in here and that is convenient we just about finished raided this village and there's quite a lot of things i did not grab like there's still a lot of hay left but our inventory is full and so is the backpack but the nice thing about this village is we found quite a lot of iron and if i'm not mistaken we only need eight iron to upgrade our backpack so let's do that we're gonna need a crafting table which we don't have anymore so let's plonk that down let's grab our backpack and we're just going to put that in there and we're going to surround it with iron which instantly upgrades it to an iron backpack and now it has even more slots do we have gold do we have enough gold for we have enough gold to upgrade it to a gold level backpack as well excellent so now we've got a lot more space and i think we're good to go for quite a while now so i think what i'll do is off camera just get some more wheat ensure we have enough food just look at this view we scaled this mountain and it's amazing it was worth it but the reason why we're up here is, yeah, is just to see if there's any specific place we want to go to and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to get myself a boat go down to the water gather those spruce trees let's do a little bit of adventure montage <laughs> After a lot of adventuring i think i found home and just to show you guys we started out our adventure over here i traveled all the way around explored all of this and then made my way back all the way to here so we could have made a shorter cut if we just came here directly but we explored we explored so to show you guys what this area looks like i think this area is called the brushlands or let's just see yeah the brushlands and this is the spot i chose i really like it and i think i'll end up building more in this general area but for now i think i'm gonna take a page from vanilla series and we're just gonna live inside this rock for now <laughs> i think this will be a excellent little starter house so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put on a bed clear a bit of area um hollow this out and i'll bring you guys back and there we have it with a lot of chopping changing we finally hollowed out this boulder and it's time to make it home and i think the first thing we need to do is just get a floor in here and i'm just going to go for something i like to do where it gives a bit of texture and with the floor all in and stripped down we can add something like this as a slight little entrance way into this area and let's just do something like this so we've got some of a some sort of a balcony and then over here in this corner i would like to do storage and we're using the drawers from storage drawers and then i think we should chuck down our crafting bench do i not have a, i do i do our crafting bench over here and in this side i think as you come in what i want to do is do our cooking areas so let's maybe do blast furnace or normal furnace blast furnace and smoker yeah that looks good and in this corner i think sleeping but what i want to do with the sleeping is i want to lift my bed up so what i'm going to do is going to go up one two up um i think like that let's just do that and now we can place our bed on top of this yeah i like that so what i think is i'm going to rip these two out I rather have a sign up there and then what we can do is we can add two more storage drawer boxes over there got some ladders so now we can get up to our bed and I'll do a sign over there just to round it off and I think just to give ourselves a little bit of privacy let's just do something like this maybe yeah no that's that's hidden away yeah that looks nice that looks really really nice and then over here we can just go ahead and add a bit of a table i think and then i like that because now on that we can go ahead and 
put down our backpack maybe yeah that looks good that looks good so we've got the making of something happening here but i think we need a bit more decoration and i'm quickly gonna do all of that and here we are in our fully decked out little house and what i did is i just filled in some of the items in here added some extra barrels little little map of the area as you can see there's not a lot happening now some paintings some more items and it's it's home for now it's really just home for now and on the outside we did go ahead and add some bushes and just a little pathway well <laughs> a few path blocks and we will continue this down to wherever it goes next and we might not be living in this house for very long but it's a start and i think it's a really nice start but that's going to be it for this episode it's been going on for quite a while so do remember to like subscribe and leave me a comment down below let me know what you think of the new series and what do you want to see in the future in the next episode we go ahead and we start with some create and i cannot wait really excited until then see you guys in the previous episode, we traversed the Terralov landscape in search of a place to call home. We raided villages, we found some wildlife, and then we finally moved in to this year boulder that we hollowed out and turned into our little starter house. And it's good, it's been working, it's a nice little addition, but we need to build ourselves a workshop because we don't have space for any create items. So what we're going to do in this episode is go do some mining, find some other biomes so we can get all the trees, and then just build the perfect workshop. Well, I crafted up some tools, got some armor going, and we chuck all of those on. And I'm just going to go find a little entrance to a cave, and we do some mining, and it's very vanilla, so I'm not going to drag you guys along on all of it. But whenever I find something interesting, I will surely bring you guys in. Okay, so right over here, we found a structure, and I do believe these structures are from the Create mod. Let's just make sure there's nothing here. Yeah, there's no mobs. Well, I do hear something, but let's open these and... Okay, copper's good. I'll take all of this, it's fine. Those have nothing in. That's a book. Iron sword. I'll take all of that as well. Two diamond ore. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. An enchanted sword. I'm going to use that for a bit because that's good. Okay, cool. So that was a really neat find and I'm going to grab these as well. Oh, frick, that freaked me out. That's a cockroach. That freaked me out so bad. Okay, so here's another structure um, that we just found. So let's just drop in on that. I just casually drop in. I don't know when I'm making a mistake or anything. Let's just see. Ooh, that's dangerous. I don't see anything around. So let's just grab these. It's not bad. Okay, not not bad. Not bad at all. What the hell is that? No, 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 no. What the freak is that? Oh, I, I don't know. So that's a millipede, and that is something... I don't just find disgusting in this game, but I really despise them in real life. Because they really gross me out. How does one get rid of that? And are they not poisonous? Oh, that is so disgusting. Love, like, I've got proper goose, goosebumps from this thing. Oh, it fell down. Because hopefully, hopefully that can't get back up, yeah? Oh, there's diamonds down there. <laughs> so not worth it. I want to get to this building and get out. Get to this building, 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 get out. 
Let's see what's that sound. That sound is freaking me out. Okay, cool. I think we're safe-ish in here. I don't see any way for anything to get in. So, um, let's maybe loot this. Any diamonds would be appreciated because then I can get out of the mines because I am currently not enjoying the mining with Alex's mods, mobs. Um, there's some terrifying stuff down here. Got some iron, potato recovery, some more iron and a power book. Uh, let's just chuck all of this in there. Whoop, there we go, three diamonds and respiration, I'll take that. And a diamond pick. Okay, that's good, that's good. Oh, there's another one. Some more iron. And then we can mine all of the iron over here, so... That is good news, still terrified though. So I think what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to try and mine straight up. Because I'm really not enjoying the sound of whatever is chasing me, or wants to chase me so i'm gonna just do that we've had quite the successful mining trip and gathered quite a lot of resources and we even managed to find some structures with some diamonds in them which is fantastic but now i would like to go on an adventure to find some of the wood types we're still missing because we're going to need some of those for builds and i think the easiest way to cut down those trees will be with a mechanical saw so we're going to have to make that so just to be sure we've got a hand crank we found in a, a little village so we're going to first need to make some and the site alloy which is just literally those two with some zinc ingots and there we go we've got 14 and side alloy which is fine that's a start and then we need to make a mechanical saw but for that we need some iron sheets and for iron sheets we need the mechanical press so we need to make a mechanical press and a depot and for all of those andesite casing so let's start with those so andesite casing you need to strip logs so i've got eight stripped logs here and we're just going to place them down and you just literally right click with your andesite alloy and you get yourself some andesite casings which is the first step the second step is we're going to need a bunch of iron so let's grab some of that and i do believe for the depot we're going to use just another andesite alloy on an andesite casing so we just do that and that is our depot and for the press we're going to need an iron block and a, sh a shaft so we've got one that we found in a chest um, but if you're not sure how to make a, a shaft it's literally just two pieces of andesite alloy and that will give you a shaft but now we'll also need an iron block and for that we're going to just do i do believe what was the recipe like that and then we've got the press. Now we've got the press to make the andesite, uh, uh, the iron plates with. And I think for now, let's maybe rip this out. And we just put that down. And on top of that, we just do, no, the press. Oh, that's one too low. The press over there. And then for the saw, we needed three iron plates. So I'm just going to chuck one, two, three iron plates on there. We're going to grab our crank put it on there and we're just going to basically do this three times so we can get our sheets and there we go we've got three iron sheets and now we can look into making our mechanical saw and now we have that and a mechanical saw is amazing let me quickly grab a tree so here we've got a tree and if we want to cut this down all we do is shift click to place the mechanical saw, saw <laughs> so it faces the tree we put on our hand crank and we just turn this and you'll see it slowly starts to break and then it will break the whole tree in the line it was your saw was facing and will drop drop your saplings and everything so let's see that real quick again just like that turn break isn't that fantastic? So with that build, we almost ready to go on our next adventure. And the next thing we need is another mod we add to add it to the pack, and it's the 
nature's compass. In this barrel, we have a compass that we found in one of the villages. And with the newly acquired saplings and spruce logs we got from harvesting those trees, we can literally put the saplings and the trees together and we get ourselves a nature's compass. And how this works is if we right click, it opens a menu and we can say dark forest. And if I click on that and say start search, it will tell us the closest one is 1,241, 42 blocks away. So that means sleep and adventure. <laughs> So not only did we find a woodland after the dark oak forest, but we also found a woodland mansion, which I'm not going to be attempting in this episode. We'll maybe do that next. But let's first grab some of those dark oak trees. Quite some time has passed since our little adventure and what I did during that time was grow a bunch of trees up there for a project and I cleared out this area, smoothed out the terrain a little bit and just made it look a lot better. I also fixed this waterfall and this waterfall is what we're going to use to power our first little build. But what I want to do before we do any of that is create two of the chipped workbenches. We got our two crafting benches so let's head on over to the project site and we are going to build like i mentioned where that waterfall is and this build will be our little starter workshop i kind of want to say so it will be also a bigger storage room because we are already running out of space in regards to storage so i think what i'm going to do is let's plonk these benches down over here so they're not in the way and then also let's take off our backpack because we've got a bunch of the materials in there and the first thing i want to do is maybe clear up this area and install the water wheels that's going to power the whole area so to install the water wheel we need to make a water wheel and to make a water wheel we just put a shaft in the center and surrounded by planks and we have a water wheel but we want to do two of these so like that and this is a small water wheel and to enlarge that we just put the water wheel back and surrounded by planks again and now we have a big water wheel which is the one we really want to work with and I think what we need to do is maybe place down where we want it to turn. So I actually want this piece of water to turn it and the rest down here to be still standing water. So let's see if that is high enough. Yeah, that should work. I wonder what it's going to look like if we go down one. No. Okay, well, we go fetch that one just now. Maybe here. But now the question is, will it stop spinning if all of this is salt fixed water? Yeah, see, now it stops spinning. Okay, so we're going to have to lift it at least one block. So the water wheels are in. I did create a little pond. It doesn't look like much at the moment, and it will have a little stream running down. But we'll get to that. But the next thing I want to do is insert the platform, because I want to build the, bay, the structure on a platform. And these are more or less the blocks I'm going to go for. Let's just get them in order. So it will be all these stone variants by chipped. And are these two actually the same? No, that's the rough one. This is the cobbled one. So we'll just line this out, this platform, with this little texture. And we're going to go out this way and that way. And I'm thinking I might do one on the side as well. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. So let's quickly do a little build montage. So 
So I changed up this area. I lowered the terrain a bit so this stands out a bit more. It just looks a bit better. And then I also laid out what I think the footprint of the build should look like. And I think then it will just be one, two, three, four. And then I want to use these nailed spruce textures for the roof. A cut variant should look nice. Let's just line this out so we have something to place against. And then this little roof over here, I want it to be like a little lean-to roof. Like this. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay. And then with this cut variant roof, we're going to just do the trims of all the roofs of this little lean-to roof and the big pitched roof up there. And with everything in front of us, we've got most of the framing done for this build. And I think it's time we fill in the empty spaces with walls, floors and roofs. So the workshop and the starter storage is starting to look like something but it still lacks a lot of detail and i also left out this roof over here to demonstrate what we're going to do in regards to detail and we're going to use another mod called framed so framed blocks are basically these blank little block blocks and what you can do is you can take a material and right click on them and create that block in that materials so there we have stripped staircases and that's what i'm going to do to this roof i'm going to build the roof up and instead of just using planks we'll be able to use stripped um stripped slabs and so forth now another neat little trick is if you have your material in the offhand and your frame block in the other hand you can just go ahead and click and it will automatically apply these materials to the blocks which is fantastic so it makes it quite easier to use and yeah it's just it's just good i, I ran out of materials <laughs> but let me get this roof done so now that we've got the roofs in and we've got some of the interiors labeled where we want machines to go we need to look into getting the power from over here all the way into this build and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to link it with a bunch of cogs trying to speed up this little speed and then just feed it into the build so the power has been sped up using the big cog to a small cog technique and then it just goes into the building on this side and on this side we're using the encased chain drives and that just transfers power into this area so we've got a power point over here which i'm going to use for a grindstone and on this point we have to add other machines so i did label them so we've got grindstone we've got a slice in we're going to have the mixer in this area and in this side we'll have the press and the poker so instead of me now going through every single one of the machines individually let me get them all in and then i'll bring you guys back well we have the power in it took some time fiddling around with all the different components to get the power to all the needed spaces but over here we've got a little grind stone so input at the top output over here um basically it just does what it says it grinds and then over here we're going to have our little mixer which we're going to use to make brass we do need a blaze burner but for a blaze burner we need to go to the nether and to go to the nether we need to go on an adventure which is not this episode no 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 um if we come on this side we have a slicer this is going to help us with all the i believe the farmers the light type of things and it will just basically you chuck meat on there it will slice it and then we can use that to cook stuff and so forth it was in the corner first but due to rotation and the way things were turning it was turning the wrong way so we had to move it but that's all good over on this side we've got a little workspace which we're not doing any work in currently as you can see because it's empty <laughs> And then over here we've got our little press where we can press our sheet and over here i want to put in a poker but for a poker we need a bunch more items that we will address in the next episode but if we head up here to our storage room we've got a bunch of empty storage drawers that we can start filling up adding everything where we want it and so forth and over here is something special we need and that is a drawer controller but for drawer controller again we need to go to the nether and i don't think we're going to do it this episode and we just crossed the river so we can see what this place looks like with shaders on and it looks fantastic i'm really loving this first little build we did and i'm excited to see this area expand and i don't know which side we'll go to first but we're going to expand and we're going to expand a lot 
but again sadly this will be it for this episode <laughs> it looks like i'm talking on a microphone it's like i'm interviewing you guys the viewers and i want to find out did you enjoy this video if so head on down to the comments and leave a comment there say stating that you liked the video and what you liked about it and please do subscribe i really appreciate it a lot and i'll see you all in the next episode bye for now in the previous episode we built this little starter workshop we explored the underground and ran into this guy what the hell is that <laughs> no, 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 no. but we also managed to find some structures on the ground get some resources but not enough to continue our adventure so in this episode we're going to look into traveling to the nether and also building a little starter iron farm so the whole purpose of this nether trip is to make some blaze burners and to do that we're going to need some iron sheets so we're going to make some iron sheets over here 12 to be precise which is in total three blaze burners we do however need netherrack and for that we need to go to the nether but while that gets pressed i want to make some upgrades for my backpack and the first one i want to do is just a normal crafting upgrade and to do that we're just going to need upgrade base and i oh we need to do yeah <laughs> i gathered enough resources to make three of these so we've got three upgrade bases and the first upgrade we're going to make is the crafting one which is just a crafting table in a chest so let's add that so we've got our crafting upgrade and the second one i want to do is the tool swapper upgrade so for that we need all the different tools so let's quickly craft those so we're going to need a pickaxe we're going to need a axe as well let's just do that so we're going to do pickaxe shovel oh, i made too many shovels <laughs> uh, let's go back in here and then we're gonna need the axe itself and then the last one i do believe is just the sword which we're gonna need one more block for and we're just gonna do sword there we go and now we can create the tool swapper upgrade as well and this upgrade um template we're going to leave because we're going to use that to create ourselves a stack upgrade but that requires a lot more iron and that is why we need an iron form and we've got everything on our backpack and an extra sword and let's light up the nether portal and let's head through i am quite terrified about this because i do not know what is waiting on the other side all well, thanks to alex's mobs so okay I don't see anything weird, which is a good start. So we can maybe go ahead and grab some of these. Oh, this is nice. It, see, it, that's the tool swapper. So it swapped out to my silk touch pick, which is kind of weird. I don't know why I did that, but I'll take it. It's maybe the better of the pick axes I have. Um, but I can honestly say it won't last either. So let's quickly grab some of this. And then I need to adventure off and go and see if I can find us a little dead breaks <laughs> nether fortress but before we go on adventure i think we just need to grab a few pieces of netherrack and now we can use our backpack our crafting table and we can actually where's the netherrack do this and create three blaze burners and there we go three so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to pick a direction mine in that direction and see if we can find ourselves near the fortress and maybe go up because it feels quite crammed down here just run for it continue straight what the heck is that it throws like little things at you okay no, no, no. Run, 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 run. Uh, there it is. But now question is, how do we get down without killing ourselves? Okay, let's just eat up and heal. So we need to remember it's all the way up there. Oh, there's a blaze burner right over there. Okay, so let's grab our blaze burner thingies let's just chuck that out and then let's just go down i guess there we go okay we're gonna just run in grab three and run out okay we've got four oh we've got three we've got three we're gonna run we're gonna head out 
What is it? No, there's a mosquito. I saw that in Mr. Beardson's video. That thing. I'm not I'm not going close to that. I don't have blocks on my inventory. No, 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 get it off, get it off, get it off. Oh, that was terrifying. That was terrifying. We need to eat. We need to get out of here. I'm not strong enough for this. I'm not strong enough for this. And it's terrifying. <laughs> okay, see, this is our area. But what the heck is that? No, no, this thing is running on... that a drop bear okay so we did get that a drop bear claw but luckily we're home can we mine this with a normal pick ready yeah we can so i'm just gonna spend a little bit of time clearing out this area of quartz and maybe grab a bit more net rack and then we'll head on through to the overworld hi there this is editing me so i am busy editing the video as i go and i noticed that the hostile mob sounds in the nether clips were really really loud so i did change that i did turn it down so i do apologize for that so the rest of the video should be better should we run into more hostile mobs anyway back to the video now that we're back here at the workshop there's a few things i want to do before we start looking into the iron farm first thing is chuck down our blaze bin over there and now we can use this mixer and get some materials made and i'm also using this area as a fuel depot so we've got some coal charcoal and if i can find some other blocks that are burnable and usable with the blaze burner i will add them to this area as well which is fantastic so now we've got everything and why we need the blaze burner is to make the poker to poke some items so i'm gonna head up here first because what we also need is a draw controller because what i currently do is right click on every single one of these to put in the stuff and it's going to go right over there so for the draw controller we actually need two repeaters which i crafted up already and then we need a diamond some stone and any type of draw and that's the draw controller for us so if we take that now and let's just remove this real quick and we put that down and let's grab some of oh i don't think i'll be able to sort that but let's just right click say for example near the quartz there and if we right click here now it should have gone in there which is fantastic so i can sort the rest of the items in my inventory quickly and but i also want to quickly just grab this so if we right click here with the key we lock the drawers and with this key we show the amount of items in each which is fantastic yeah it goes all the way around so like we mentioned we need a deployer to do all the pokey pokey bits so what we do need for the pokey pokey is to create some brass so what we do is let's grab some coal and in here we chuck our copper come on all of it and then all our ink is ink and then we just give this a piece of coal and that's when the thing will start mixing and there we have two brass once it's done mixing we can grab all our brass and now we've got quite a lot of that and what we can do is chuck them on there and get them pressed and now that we've got the pressed brass we can head on over here and we need to make ourselves some electron tubes for those we need iron sheets and we need polished rose quartz and rose quartz is just basically quartz and redstone so we've got some on us and let's just say rose quartz but we need to turn those into actual let's make another one into actual polished and for polished rose quartz we're going to need some sand and we're going to need some paper sugarcane we turn it into some paper we make some sandpaper and if we ha hold this in our offhand and we hold this in our normal hand and we right click and hold we will turn those into little polished rose quartz and in these we take take and we grab some steel plates and if we combine those we get electron tubes now using some andesite alloy and our brass plates we can create the brass hand and using the brass hand and the side casing and one of those electron tubes we can create the pokey and the poker can go onto this little system here let's just rip this out no that's wrong <laughs> like so no that's also wrong <laughs> just like that 
And then we have a poker as well now, which we can use in some of our future recipes. So the iron farm. The iron farm is going to be quite simple. We're going to use a cobble generator to generate cobble that will crush down into gravel. And if you wash gravel with one of the encased fans, you have a chance to get iron ingots, no, iron nuggets and flint. So that's what we're going to do. That's the process we're going to use. But I also just want to quickly show that with the encased fan, and we're just going to put it here at the back, if you use certain items and certain materials to wash with, you get certain results. So if we do this, it blows the right way. Okay, and then we're going to put our, I almost want to say our item that's going to affect it over there. Let's just close that up. And then let's just plonk down two trap doors, one over there and one like this pressure plate over there if we now for example put down lava right there you see how that turns orange now what we can do is we can actually let's make that higher throw iron and all those items on there that needs to be smelted and if we give it time it will all turn into the ingot form and there we have everything turned in to the right ingot form just be careful you can burn yourself and that is so cool so this is the easier way to smelt all your items and you save coal but also you can remove the lava and let's put down a campfire and this is more for cooking foods um burning your kelp to turn it into dried kelp so if we chuck down kelp and there we have the dry kelp so that is another item or another way you can use this fan and there's a bunch of others that we will get into in the future but for now i'm gonna gather up all the resources we need to build this iron farm so the iron farm it's not going to be a traditional iron farm where we have villagers a zombie scaring them no 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 because we're playing create we're going to create a create iron farm and like i previously mentioned that happens by washing gravel and gravel you get from cobble that you grind and that's the whole process we're going to follow so over here i prepared a little area or base over there and in this area i created this opening which will be a mine shaft and down here i've created some space for some water wheels so the idea is that we have our cobble being generated in the mine and we'll decorate it all and that gets taken out and up into the sky and here we'll have a little washing structure for the gravel that will wash it all and turn it into iron nuggets that we'll deposit on the side of here i think will be the best so i think let's get in a few basic structures we have some of the basic structures in here and over here is where we will, where we will generate the lava and we're just going to do this so the lava will generate cobble up here the cobble will fall on the belt and then from here on let's extend these a bit longer we'll send it up and from here we'll send it over and then we will send it on to the factory but this is the general shape of where things will happen funnels over here to ensure that they all get picked up and just for safety we're going to add a few extra underneath drills acquired and we're going to put the drills right over here and then on the other side we'll do the same but let's just fill in all these other blocks let's just grab something else just to make it a bit look a bit nicer and the other drills are going to sit in line here so we're just going to do a line of temporary blocks like that and then our drills will go in there so we're just going to place temporary blocks over here which is cobble um because we're going to be generating cobble anyway so it's just better and then we're going to waterlog these over here just grab some of those just fill the buckets up and what should happen now is they waterlogged so and we'll have lava on top and as soon as these blocks get broken new stone will form in this area and they will just drill it all out again well we've got our eight water wheels in and there's potential for adding a bunch more at the back here but i think this should be enough for now and what i want to do is i want to take this power multiply the speed and bring it up into this belt and then this belt will transfer the power all the way to the other belts and from here we will activate the drill bits that will ensure we get some cobble and all of this will only run to here for now until we build the next so let's quickly get on down here and add a few cogs to make this go faster and the way you do this is if you transfer from a big cog to a small cog you kind of double the power more or less so if we do big cog and then add a small one this one will be turning a lot faster and now we can just go big on top again 
But the problem is you can't put a small one there unless you put an andesite casing on that. But instead of putting an andesite casing on that one, we're first going to jump up this way. We're going to go small over here and then we'll do big on that again. And we put an andesite casing on this one. We can put another small one and it's not attached to this one, but only that one. And now we can repeat this a few times and then feed it in there. And as you guys can see, now the drills are spinning and they did bind the temporary blocks and it's working. But I'm not going to put in lava yet and I'm not going to cover anything yet because I first want to test it all to see if the speeds are right. But for now, we've got all of this in place. And I think the next step we need to do is work out where we want to do the actual washing part of stuff. And I think the best part for that is if we do maybe our little storage area and then work backwards from that. And here we have the output of the farm. We'll have flint in this one, iron nuggets in this one, and they all come from this drawer over here that's locked to only accept ingots, uh, nuggets, and flint. And they will also then, with the use of brass funnel funnels, split them and put them into this input so what's going to happen on this little strip is this dirt just shows it lines up with that so on this little strip what we're going to do is we're going to build our little washing system to wash that gravel let's place down a trap door oh, a pressure plate over here we'll do our fan pointing this way and then what will happen is stuff will drop down it will slowly scoot over so on top of this let's just do two temporary blocks and then let's just do some shoots and into the side of these shoots we'll just do that perfect and we'll just raise these up one more each and then we need to put water in that area and what i thought could look nice is if we do the frame trap doors and we just do a bunch of them like this and then another bunch on top so now, now that we have the frame trapdoors in, we can actually place water here and it will not flow away. And the idea of these trapdoors will be that we can maybe just close them and we can change the materials so it suits this area better. And if we go into our backpack, we can do these maybe in light grey glass. And the rest I would maybe say we do in a stone variant or something it's very weird you can't really see the water but the water is in there so it is there it's all the millstones and they will just be standing on top of these and then i want to do another row of shoots like this and on top of those shoots we're just going to do a little vault system and what did i just do Okay, well, a little vault system. So my brain had a technical difficulty while um, I was crafting all of these. So what I thought I should do maybe first, just to get this running, is just to do that. So we actually have at least three that goes in. And that way we can slowly start making some ingots, iron ingots, <laughs> or storing some gravel. And then as the farm works, we can take in the iron we make and we just expand on what is happening over there. Over here, we're going to have to do shafts. No, that's the wrong way around. So we'll do shafts. We're going to do three. And then I think let's for now just extend it right over there so we can just see it. Funnels. Going in. And now we just need to connect up this and i do hope this angle allows for it to connect easily we'll just have to wait and see all the belts are now operational everything's running smoothly so items will go up we'll enter into here into the temporary little small vault that we hopefully can expand real fast but what i also did is i did manage to dig a hole through here reroute power there but what i want to do first is just maybe speed up the power a little bit so we've got a bit of faster washing and milling happening over here and we sped up these gears quite a lot fed them into a case chain drive and just to this uh shaft over here that we'll connect all the way to the top if we right click there and we take it all the way up here that all connects and we can just place this block back let's just open that is blowing the right direction that is a stroke of luck a small cog on top of this one okay overstressed i was worried it's um concerned that it's going to be overstressed but luckily we do have eight more big water wheels there we go so this is a total of 16 water wheels that will make this whole system work and the millstones are going at a thousand stress units and the washer's going at 
512. So I do think we can slow this down a little bit. And we're going to need six buckets of lava. So if we put on lava in these spots. Okay, so they do make cobblestone for us. And there goes all the cobblestone over there. Yes, we're going to have to speed that up a lot. Because that's very slow. And those now head into the vault. They get grinded down. They all wait there until they're completely washed. I see this area has not been powered yet. Just by fixing up the gears, sorting all the speeds out and everything, I managed to get enough iron to add a few more vaults. So now we've got six grindstones grinding away. Uh, we've got the washer washing and we've already got 52 ingots which is not bad at all so what i want to do is i'm gonna be afk a little bit to get some iron to see if we can maybe do something with some iron create a little structure i don't think it's going to be a build i think i rather want to do something that looks like a rig or some sort and for that i might need girders and for girders i need iron so afk time so we've been afk for a bit and this is the amount of iron nuggets we got we also have a lot of flint but i did do a void upgrade on that and i did do an upgrade on the iron chest as well but we also had to increase the cobble generation because this ran out very quickly so what i did was i just went ahead and doubled on the cobble generation Ooh, it's very loud um, which also meant we had to add three extra water wheels but i do think it's all worth it we have all the iron we need and i'm going to craft that up into a bunch of things we're going to need to make this place look a little bit better well we gathered up some materials and when i got back i noticed that the vault is completely full so i did make it a three by six no a three by three uh, vault now and i also added three more grindstones and they are all full and if we check at the vault yeah that's also climbing that was 18.2 earlier now it's 18.5 so this thing is now even bigger but i will keep an eye on it and if it doesn't work out i will make it smaller but first things first i need to frame this build so what i was thinking is if we can do we can do that We can run that up and then we can do maybe a five gap so we've got that one it's one one two three four five and we do a double over here again and then right in line with that we do another double girder and then i think we'll end up doing one over here somewhere maybe okay let's maybe do that in a little bit of a speedy montage And the whole gravel washer has been framed everything's in place and it's still filling up and just by us doing this frame we've made 1827 ingots this thing is pumping out the iron i added these two little barrels on the side and i think they look awesome but they do need something and this something will also give this area a pop of color and i just love that i just love these i think this one we'll put on this side yeah they look awesome so this area is looking good it's not complete i want to fill it up with some more i might even do another bat over here and do maybe a pile of gravel or something also maybe fence it in i'm not really sure what 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 do you guys think what do you think should we fence it in give me down some ideas down in the comments but let's quickly see what this place looks like with shaders on yeah this build is looking so neat i'm loving this build yeah this is so cool looking can't wait to add more to this build but i mean the iron we're never gonna run out of ingots again but this video has been going on for way too long and i think it's time we call it <laughs> this will be the end of this episode i do hope you all liked it remember do like subscribe and comment um, 
let me know what do you think what do you think of this area and also we got a horse if you want to give a name to the horse give us suggestions down in the comments anyway i'll see you all in the next create episode appreciate it bye for now in a previous episode we went to the nether where we encountered a drop bear a slingshot dude and a face hugging mosquito we then built some really noisy cobble generators turned that cobble into gravel and washed that gravel till it turned into iron but in this episode we play with some minecart contraptions and we use those contraptions to pick us up some mob spawners and we build ourselves a good looking warehouse we've been running around with unenchanted iron armor for long enough it is time we get an upgrade and see to enchanting some of our items but to do that we're gonna need some form of xp and to get xp we're gonna build a mob farm but building a mob farm in minecraft create is a little bit different and what we're gonna need for that process is something called a cart assembler so a cart assembler is two andesite alloy a redstone and some logs and we're just gonna make four of those and we're also gonna need some rails some levers a wrench and mine carts. so let's grab those and do by mine gods and the best way to demonstrate how this works is down here where we found that zombie spawner and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to mine enough blocks to be able to get underneath it and what i want to do is i want to put on a rail right below it my cart assembler chuck a mine card in there and put down a lever and if i right click this to activate you will notice it stopped moving and it's actually now a contraption i can i can push this and what i've done is in the create config you can change it so you're able to pick up the spawner contraptions and that's what we're going to do instead of placing on rails transporting them all, all over the world we're going to just pick them up so then you can just take your wrench right click and there we have it a minecart con minecart contraption which is our spawner After that little adventure, we managed to find ourselves six spawners. We have two skeleton, two zombie, and even two blaze spawners. So it's important to note that with these minecart contraptions, if you allow yourself to pick them up, that you cannot put them in chests unless you activate another config. So that's very important. But for now, I do not trust myself in these spawners being active behind you. So let's just flip them all and activate them. To ensure that nothing will spawn i'm sure nothing would spawn but let's just be safe i cleared out this little area flattened it out and i think what i want to do is put in a platform and we do the mob grinder mob farm in this little area over here and over here we finally have the platform marked out where we will do the whole entire mob farm pink area indicates where the spawning area will be over here we just indicate where the walls will be and i think the storage and loot collection area should be in this area so what I'm thinking is let's build this maybe backward. Think right over here. Let's remove that quickly. We will do our little killing area. And I'm going to do this, I think, this way. The idea is we will have mobs flying over and they will be landing on this spot over here. And then what I think is we'll just trap them in a little container like this. And from the other side, we will then put down a deployer it should kill using so we're going to give it a filter we give that the sword like that and now it's used so whenever a mob falls here the sword will attack it as soon as we give it power so that's a good good little start to that from this i want to say we need to remove items so we'll just place a funnel and then i'm thinking we should maybe do collection over here so we've got a blaze spawner which will give us one item. I do believe that is blaze rods. Then the skeleton spawner will give us bones and arrows. Those are the two we want to keep. And the zombie one will give us rotten flesh. And the last one, I think the one that's the most important is we're going to have to do this for XP, which is fantastic. So we've got those in, which is all good. Now I need to get the whole transportation tube and to get the mobs on this side all put in. On this side we'll do a little belt and this belt will then transport the mobs over we have to remove this one as well and i think let's make it one longer maybe 
because the mobs will come down here so this one will just stick by at the end and what will happen is mobs will fall on here from a high platform fall down this hole and i want them to fall on top of a encased fan that we place maybe there so what will happen is they'll fall on here they'll get pushed up and then we'll have them pushed over to the side so i think that is looking good but the next thing we need to do is add the second level where these mobs will fall down from and i'm thinking this should be a height high enough let's just do that so it's a one block drop okay let, let's lift it let's lift it one more yeah i think that's better so then the mobs will drop from down there from up there onto this transport it over and so forth and this naturally will run all the way back to here and now we just need to do that eight more times and now we've got a bit more of the structure in over here if we jump up here we've got the platform where we will put the spawners these are a bit higher because we'll have two spawners um, above those blocks so basically if you put the rail here the spawner will be one block higher so the contraption goes here so the spawner will actually be over there which is fine so that gives us three blocks underneath and once we've placed these two spawners we'll remove those two tracks and then we'll place spawners on all four of these at one two three four and they will allow then for one gap two gaps underneath them so mobs can easily go through so that's what this is and over here on the side if we just remove this basically what this is the mobs will go down they will drop down there in the fan run up and then we put two more fans over there which will push them over They'll fall down, they get murdered, and everything gets sent on this way. And these are the chests we're going to use. And I'm just going to put a bunch of funnels on the back of those. And what we're going to do here at the ends, we're going to place in... Did I make it? I did. A disenchant. And what this is going to do, it's just going to take enchanted bows and stuff like that. Remove the XP from that, turn into liquid XP like you just saw there. So there's liquid XP in there, and that will pump into a tank that we'll place in the end. But I think the next thing I need to do is just maybe close all of this up a bit more, just to make it look a bit more like a mob spawner. And then after that, we'll go down there and add in the water wheels. So we've got most of the structure in and covered and it does not look like much at the moment we will sort that out but the next thing is power we need to give this thing power and we're gonna have to speed it up to make certain parts move a bit faster and what i want to do is i want to do that a bit differently i want to do it using a it's called a rotational speed controller which is a simple gadget that you can plug into your basic water wheel change a few settings and things will move for move faster but for that we need to go do something over there to create a rotational speed controller we're going to need the pokey machine and the reason for this being is you're going to need a precision mechanism and that is made by cycling a golden sheet through this process five times it has a chance of failing but what we will do is we put it on we first give it a small cog big cog nugget and then repeat and then we'll see what happens so let's just do that so we will chuck that on there small cog Big cog, nugget. We just repeat again. Small, big, nugget. And this is going to go five times. And now you guys can see it failed. It has a chance of failing. And what we got was crushed raw gold. That's a bummer. Our very first one. A failed one so let's do another one real quick then once we have the precision mechanism we're going to need some brass casing so again same process strip logs right click with brass ingot we get some brass casing and now we can make precision making oh well rotational speed controllers so right underneath the spawning platform we have this little area that i've prepped already added some water and what i want to do is just add some water wheels and i do believe if we run stuff up here it will line up with the fan and all those kind of things so that's the route we're going to use over there and then from here let's just do a few water wheels 
So we'll basically have our, which is encased boxes, our water wheels on this level over here. Two, three, four, five. And I'm just going to start off with five and we can take it from there. But then what we want to do is we want to rip this out. And you know what? Maybe we'll keep this one. And what we'll do is we'll just stick our rotational controller right on there. Rot yeah, rotational speed controller. And if we chuck this on there, now we've got that running. And what we can do is right there, we click, we hold, and we can set the speed. And as you guys can see, it already goes a lot faster. And now what we can do is just feed it right into the system. So far, it's been relatively easy. We just ran this into an uh, encased chain drive that ran all the way along there. We flipped it to power this fan. And then from that encased chain drive, we just ran a line up again, which we also just turned. And in case that turned on this. And this instantly went the right way. The fan's blowing upwards. And then we just connected from the fan over here into a gearbox into the little belts up there. And... All these belts are also running the right way so everything seems to be working perfectly for now and this is where it get, gets interesting we need to now transfer all this power all the way up to there and see if we can make that part work and it i know it does not look good from the outside but we again in case chain drives up we had to split it over here with a normal block run it into a gearbox a few shafts just to get that spinning the right way we've got this over here so what i think is we're just going to run this all the way through to there and let's see okay so that's running the wrong way but we can change that we can fix that up what we'll do is remove that we'll remove this and we'll just chuck in a little gearbox on this area now that's running the right way we still need to power this thing so what i think we need to do is maybe push that there and just again with the encased chain drives to just do this and we have ourselves a killing mechanism which i think is gonna work it's gonna work and now the only thing we need to do is get the spawners in and with all of that the build is closed it's completely closed and it's time for us to add the spawners so let's grab grab those and then we'll just place them inside and then turn this thing on and see if it's actually working and i think for safety purposes we're just going to remove this little chain drive and that should close put those off it does and now we can just place these up here and now we can finally place our spawners on top and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add two rails and then we're going to add two contraptions and then we'll do a blaze in front i think it just spawned yeah it did and a skeleton in the back <laughs> and we're just going to remove those and now we need to kill that guy before he destroys everything. <laughs> what am I? No! And we finally survived that vicious, vicious death loop. And <laughs> it was such a pain. But I've been AFK for a little bit just to gather up some of the resources, and we've been doing good. But the most precious one the experience as you guys can see it's in it's looking nice it's got some fiery bits that we'll fix but this build really needs a shell and to do that we need to go grab a few resources so while i'm down there somewhere in this cave mining some granite i was looking through my analytics and i saw that a bunch of you guys are not subscribed you're viewing the videos but you're not subscribed so why don't you go hit on there click the subscribe button and make sure you never miss another video again go on do it i know you want to well i believe all the resources we're going to need for this build is in this backpack and i think it's time we just do a little building montage get the shell in there and see what we've got to work with
And after placing quite a lot of blocks, I think it's complete. And I do like the block palette. I love the granite. I love the deep slate. And the roof is something I really enjoy. I wanted to like, like metal roof feeling. And this is all just clay variants that I put through the chip table. This is the room. That's the farm. It's very loud in here. They go over. They fall down. Over here you can see them get murdered and um, i ran out of swords so we need to restock this but we will do that and i've been gathering a lot of items so here we have items coming through they get disenchanted the item gets dropped into lava and then the xp goes into this little tank over here and it's not connected on inside yet not yet i don't know if we're ever going to fill it up so for now i'm just gonna have this little bar i might wrap it around and repeat the same little detail on this side and then send it down underground to a bigger tank or something but for now i think this is awesome another thing i will do between episodes maybe in a live stream i don't know is maybe just connect these with paths add a bit more brush and grass and stuff because this area i did and it looks a lot better already so i think it would look nice if we can repeat this little detail on that side and even do maybe a custom tree or two in the area but like I said, between episodes or in the next episode, and I also want to cover this and make a little cage around this, which would be fantastic. And then just to show you guys, the iron farm's been working over time. We've got 22.6 nuggets. So I'm considering maybe changing this out for a compacting drawer, just make it easier. Then I don't have to compact that all the time myself. Our trusty steed. And our trusty steed finally has a name in the comments. Some guy that's his name some guy said why not call him horace and i do like that and i think we're going to do that there we go Boop. so he has a name and now we can go on more joyous adventures but for those of you that wanted your names picked but it didn't happen i've got good news so i went to the lush cave to get some clay for the roof and i found these guys i accidentally put this one in a pot they're called flutters so in the comments down there please name suggestions for the two flutters if we can get a duo name that would be fantastic but sadly that will be all the time i have for today and it's been a fun packed episode with the whole creation of this mob grinder and the structure around it i really enjoyed it so if you did like this video like i asked earlier please go like subscribe comment down there and i'll see you all in the next episode bye for now in the previous episode we went mob spawner hunting we got trapped in a death loop and we defaced a lush cave for some clay all for the sake of building this xp farm and now we have 10,000 xp nuggets which is fantastic but only three diamonds that we can use to create gear to enchant and that brings us to where we are right now we need a mine shop so in today's episode we will be looking at building a mine shop reaching all the way down to bedrock level and even maybe up a little bit to reach the plateau of the hill behind us and also we'll be building some mining machines and tunnel walls that will help us gather these resources a little bit more on the automatic side so i scouted all around this mountain and i think i'm gonna settle on this area right here for the mine shaft i already dug a little little ways into it just to see what's happening on the inside but just imagine we open up this whole area create like a little cave entrance going in and then we build a shaft that goes all the way up and all the way to bedrock the reason why we want to go all the way up is because i currently use the top of this plateau to grow my trees temporarily so it needs to go all the way to the top and we might even build some farms up there in the long run and if we come right over here we go one two three four five six and then the edge i do believe this is the right point so the drill will be going into this area so we've got a bunch of mechanical drills and we'll just place them down like that so one two three four five and then two on that side two on this side so this should give us a five by five grid and then on top of these we want to do a rope pulley so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to place one block down and then i will do our rope pulley over here two small water wheels boop, boop. and now that we have our power in i want to put down a speed controller and this should still in theory be one too high okay so we'll just lift this up another block and we'll just do the rope pulley over there 
that should be fine and now what we need to do is we just need to place some chests on here just to make sure we get all the resources going down as well and this might be overkill in regards to chests i don't know but we're just going to do it anyway and once we have all of that we need to glue all of this together so that's this and let's grab that bit and this and then this one i'm just going to do from there all the way to there and now we can remove this piece of dirt and that one the rest will be drilled out let's do this well there it goes and let's see if we can increase the speed let's try 64 And it reached all the way down to bedrock. So if we just, in theory, put this on top, it should reverse the whole action and we will see the elevator slowly making its way up. I don't know if those ladders are going to be a problem. And here it comes. Okay, cool. So now this thing should be fine and we should be done with it. So I can just literally break this. And now we can just pick all of this up. But let's just see what did we get. A lot of deep slate, a lot of tough and the side cobble okay so the chest were a bit of overkill but we did get some ores as well redstone okay not bad the contraptions cleared away the shelf goes down all this way to this level and i took this some time and i cleaned up this area because this is where we're going to have to have an elevator that's going to go up and down and i have a few ideas of things i want to do but we also need to do this all the way down there and i've got some ladders i've got some water and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put down a little bit of water and then we'll ride this down or wait till it's at the bottom and then take it from there. At the bottom of the mine shaft, then I cleared it out exactly the same I did with the ground floor up there. And this is where we will be mining for some ores and deep slate in general. But we're also going to need some of the more normal blocks like andesite stone. So we created another level right over here and it's in between the bottom of the world and the ground floor. But for now, I've been climbing this ladder all the way from the bottom to the top quite a few times and it needs to change. So I think we need to head up all the way to the top and just get the elevator pulley in place and maybe just do a temporary little elevator that can carry us up and down before we start working on this some more. No, 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 no. Oh. Okay, I need to... <laughs> reassign the key to whistle horses because Horace over here I accidentally whistled and he came down all the way into the mine shaft I luckily I placed a block of dirt just before I did that but still it oh man Horace you scared me you scared me a rescue mission later and we've got our pulley system in and what i currently did here is i create a little water wheel system underground over there it pushes through and then it runs up and powers the elevator pulley with a belt and yes you might think it's in front you're gonna see it from down there but i think i know what i want to do yeah i think i've got an idea with this thing we need to do first is maybe just get the basic shape of the elevator in even if we do it in some random blocks the elevator needs to go in this three by three grid so i'm going to start off by just doing a floor with the polished cut deep slate and then i want to try doing this uh let's see like that in the corners just to make it look a bit bigger so we've got three tall like this and then if we take glass and let's say the polished cut deep slate i can do the bottom part of that top part of that like that and that i do like that shape and i want to see if we take gray glass if we can yeah i like that i like that a lot so we've got the gray glass over there oh i ran out of gray glass which is fine we'll get some more you can actually use bars to convert these copycats into that material whereas the frame blocks you can only use full blocks but on the copycat blocks you can actually use stuff like bars as well and then this one like that and like that and then on this side rather put our control so we'll have our control with the copycat bars on this side we won't have anything and now it's just for the roof so for the roof i'm thinking we do 
slabs on these and then framed trap doors over here which we'll also finish off with the deep slate and in the center a full block which will be where our pulley connects to and i'm thinking maybe we rip out this and i'm just going to break all of that and what we want to do is there we just want to make two contact connectors one like that and one like that and then on these sides we just need to add our train doors or andesite doors awesome okay so we have a full elevator build i just need to glue it in in place and then what i also want to do is just head downstairs in the different areas and just add these little redstone contacts i can just glue it all to there so what happens with the redstone contact as soon as i right click this the elevator connects and then it turns this redstone contact into an elevator contact and what we can do is we can then give it a name we're going to say this is one because it's going to be above we can call it mountain top and we can tell it only open i think it's east side only yeah yeah yeah, east side only so with all of this in place i think we need to head on down and see if we can add the other redstone contacts quickly to this build so we're currently here at the mine entrance which will be our ground floor and if we go in one block to make sure we reach the elevator and we go up one two three fourth block and one over here this is where we're going to put our connector so if in theory we put down the redstone contact facing into that it turns into an elevator contact and we can now just put a button on that that's just temporarily but let's give it a name we're going to call it g for ground floor and we're just going to call it mine entrance and we want it to open all the doors and we say okay and if we clear out all of these blocks just to make sure and we right click this button we should be seeing the elevator come down excellent oh man it works I think the speed is fine we might speed it up a bit i'll play around with that but now if we go in we can right click um, scroll that to mountain top right click doors close on both sides and we all go up all the way to the top of mountain and look at that view there's the base there's the mountain Whoop. here's the platform and only the one door opens up that is excellent so i think what we need to do next is get all the other redstone contacts in and make sure this whole elevator system works from top to bottom we're currently here in the deep slate level i added new contact i gave it a name and if we push this button it should call the elevator it's moving it's coming down and it's not the fastest but i think the speed it's currently at is, is suitable i'm gonna get some material ready and i'm just gonna start building up the shaft itself in general and it just got you oh i'm loving this And the mine shaft is done and we might have gotten a little bit carried away with the decoration part. You see, I went all the way out and we even finished pulley system on top. And I think it looks so cool with the spinning flywheels. This belt that went down the front it still goes down, but we have these little structures holding it in place. And it just stops over here with a flywheel that makes it kind of look like it's being powered from there. It also kind of makes it look like a little face we've got there with two eyes, a spinning nose, and a mustache. <laughs> but not the point. And then also we cleared up this area. We finished this pathway. We stopped it over here. We cleared it up and just opened it up all the way to the dream farm area. Which is fantastic. And I really, really love how this came together. And if we head on here, we've got all our floors. But let's head to the ground floor so we can talk about 
the mining machine. So while we're taking this elevator down, I would like to take this time to say thank you to every one of you that's been subscribed. I do, however, see in my analytics that a total of 94% of you are watching the videos but not subscribed yet. So do yourself a favor, go click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and make sure not to miss out on a video. So the next thing on our list is the machine to mine out some resources for us because we do not have enough resources to build or to craft ourselves some diamond gear and thus enchanting is way behind. First things first, I'm going to make just a basic machine. I do have a tutorial for something that's more or less like this, but I would like to improve on this machine at some later stage. We're going to need a drill down there, which is new. And what this is going to do, this is just going to ensure it removes things that are in the way that could possibly destroy the machine from here on we're going to go up five one two three four five and three to each side and once we have all of these in what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and just glue them all together like that just make sure you add that one to that as well we'll add in the storage and for now i'm just going to go with barrels Next up, we're also going to need a deployer, and the first deployer will fill in this gap that this drill causes. So right over here, we're going to stick down a deployer. We will give this a filter and let's say cobble, but you can change that for whatever block is most common in the level you mine at. So for example, if you mine in the nether, you will typically replace that with nether rack. Next up, we're just going to add something like this. And over here, we will add another deployer and this deployer will be putting down rails. So currently this system is going to run with normal rails. I am going to look into improving it by adding maybe powered rails and doing a system that works like that, which will work a bit faster. But this system is going to run with normal rails and it's going to run with a furnace mine guard. Then we're going to come back and right over here like this. So that's our contraption. And then I like to put down a stair here. It's just easy that if you have to push something, you can just crouch underneath and push it. Then going towards the back, we'll go back another three and then maybe come down all the way to there. And in this last one, we put down our plow and that will be picking up the tracks. So we've got to deploy it to put down the block, a deploy it to put down the rails. We've got the cart that's running along. And then we have a little plow that will pick up everything. And now we can just make sure all of this is glued together. Like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select that one. And just glue it there. Which means this thing's actually ready to go. First of all, hold and say lock rotation. Put down our furnace minecart. And if we flip this lever it should pick it all up and because it picked it all up you would see that blocks mined so i'm just going to chuck the rest of our rails in there and the rest of our cobble so now that this contraption's built you can easily just right click it and we'll pick it right up so we're down here at the mine and this is the spot we're going to just put down the miner in and how we do that is we place down a rail and on that we right click with the contraption and there it is i think it's glitching into the walls a bit but that's fine and then we can just grab a piece of coal or whatever so i'm just going to take charcoal and we're just going to feed that and that should in theory go okay so i do notice it's not placing rails so we're just going to push it a little bit <laughs> And yeah, this was in the way, but there it goes. And it's going to slowly continue to mine and just gather resources. Well, we placed the miner down in its default place where we're currently storing it. And if we unpower it, we can just have a look at all the loot. We got two barrels almost filled with cobble deep slate. And then we got some resource. We got seven diamonds and in Tain Iron, a bunch of redstone, which was not a bad trip for its maiden voyage. Definitely room for improvement on the mining rig. Um, I will look into that between episodes. I'll also maybe see about decorating this area a bit better because currently it's just a hole in the wall. But this part came out so good looking. We, however, do not have enough time to upgrade that machine in this episode or nor enchant our armor or even create the armor. But before we go, I asked for name suggestions for the two flutters and the, my favorite two was none other than Bill and Ben. 
<laughs> the two flower pot men and vice times i thank you for this comment and for these name suggestions i really appreciate it so if you have not done so yet do remember like subscribe and i'll see you all in the next episode bye for now last episode we built this elevator to take us all the way from deep slate level to the mountain top and then we built this cool looking lift system at the top of the mountain we also built ourselves a super simple mining drill to gather some resources but this episode we're going to address the issue that is food because i'm getting tired of eating bread so we're going to look at expanding a simple crop farm like this and replacing it with some of these new farmers delight crops so the area I have in mind for this farm is this area over here. So I was thinking on this little area, we can do like a windmill with some automatic farms. And then we can do a path running around to the old house. And in this area, just fill it in with some crop plots. So if we look from the top, we'll have windmill and then just crops running all the way here. And that will give us reason to connect this house all the way to the base over here. And this area is one step closer to being the perfect space. I added the little path, add a little area that will go up to the windmill area and also the storage room for all the farming products. But I also added this little path running around this way through what will potentially be the farmlands to our little starter house. But it still needs a lot of decoration. It needs some bushes. It needs some, some beautification. But I think the first thing we need to do is gather up some resources and just get a platform in and see what this build's going to look like. So I changed my mind and instead of doing a platform, I did a foundation because I think what I want to do here is not do a platform with a structure on it, but instead do a farmhouse. So we'll come up here, we'll enter, we'll have doors and we'll have a farmhouse going in this area. And we'll also have a back area. And over here I want to do not a crop field per se, but rather a bunch of little almost, I want to say planter boxes. But before we can continue, we need to go gather some resources. And the one resource I'm really looking for is wool. Wool for windmill sales. So I might go out, go shear a few sheep, or if I find a village with a windmill or two from Create, I might just nab those. A hop, skip, and a boat row later, and we've got two backpacks filled with materials for this build. So we've got all our buildy little bits, our blocks and stuff, but also all our create contraption stuff. And I think what we need to do is maybe do a little montage, get some structure or shape going here, and just see what we have to work with. <laughs> it's it's in the world it's not by any means complete we do need uh, a lot of texturing a lot of detailing i want to fix the roof because the roof's just running straight through and in my builds i like to add a little i almost want to say a drop in the roof so that needs to happen these areas need to get maybe like a little window maybe a planter box just liven it all up in general but what i want to do now is see if i can add a windmill to this area and instead of going with a traditional windmill that's on the building that's round I built one in my previous playthrough with Create and I want to repeat that. So it will basically go in this area, I think, because it will be a nice little balance. Okay, so the windmill will be in this area. Center pod will be where the bearing goes. So let's build a little base for this. And then I think in the corners, what I want to do is just add these little pieces just to give it a different type of shape. And in the center, we're going to have the bearing. So let's just use some temporary blocks. And I do think the bearing should be one higher, maybe right about here. Yeah. Windmill bearing. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, now we can rip out these and we're going to replace those with a shaft. And that's the base of a windmill structure. So we can open this up. We can reach the, the bearing and everything, but it won't activate now because there's no sail blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I think that's a good start to the windmill. I know it looks a bit strange now, maybe a bit like a rocket ship, but I think it's those points. Okay, now we need to add some wind sails to these. And I think we're going to go out one, down one, and let's just take these all the way up like that. And then up top, we're going to have one, two, three, 
and we'll come down over here all the way till we have two i think on top here we're going to put a shoot a girder a girder and maybe one more and we'll just glue all of that now it's complete and i think it looks cool i'm going to see as soon as i add decoration what it looks like but if we in theory open this and this is set to yeah that's fine and if we right click it starts to spin and it produces 5120 stretch units and those stretch units gets transferred all the way from up there to under under here which is right underneath the farmhouse and in this general area what i want to do is i want to create like a little crop farm so we're going to go out one two three four five blocks in each direction a portable storage interface so let's just do this so that will go from there to two blocks over which should be there that should be fine and that will just connect and this will go then onto a belt all the way to over here and then this belt will then again pick up the items and we're just going to use oak trims and just send it all the way to the building on top which in theory should work so what i want to do is i want to put a draw controller over here with a funnel next to it so all the items will get deposited from this farm via the portable storage interface get transported into the controller unit into the storage above so I've done some work, I've added a bit of crops, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but if we right click that, it should harvest everything that is ready. They go into the storage interface, they get deposited into the drawers, which is perfect, so we can fill this whole wall with some drawers. And down here we have everything going, everything working perfectly, everything gets sent upwards. And on top here we did a bit of work on the storage area, I use these half drawers because they just look a bit nicer added some oak cabinets and seeds over there and most of it's been moved in i will sort it out fill it in a bit more as time goes on but this area up here still needs a bit of attention and that's where all the farmer's delight stuff comes in like the stoves the baskets the cooking pots and so forth over here i want to do a working area and then i want to do something of maybe like an island type thing and on this side i want to do all the cookers so i want to do a cooker with a basket no nope, cooker and a basket on this side and we're just going to repeat that three times or four times so we'll have all our cookers and each of them will have their basket so they'll deposit their item that's finished oops that's wrong to the side and then we can just put on them whatever we're going to need so we're going to do pots and frying pans so we'll do those like that so that's all our preparation and then on the table over here i would like to add maybe some baskets so i think let's rip out these two and then we do baskets like this and that way we can do cutting boards so if we cut and it's, uh, it's important to note that if you have a cutting board it puts the item in the opposite direction as the handle so i'm going to play around with this a bit and then we'll see where it ends up so i moved things around a bit and i changed up i kept the center area clean and i just added things like you see them now but i think what we need to do now is cook our first meal in here and i looked at the recipes and i think i'm gonna go for hamburgers so for hamburgers we need bread beef patties cabbage leaves onions and tomatoes so let's grab onions tomatoes We've got some beef mince, we've got some bread, and we've got some cabbage leaves. Chuck the beef in there, then they should all go there. So while that happens, let's grab the knife. We put the cabbage in our offhand, and we can just do this. And if we open this, we've got all our leaves in there. That is excellent. And let's see. Yep, there goes our beef patties. And now we can just take all of that, and we can assemble our burgers. So if we go to our crafting table, click the burgers... And there we go, we've got seven burgers made, and I'll make up a bunch more while I'm in here. And while we're waiting for that meat to cook up, why don't you go down, push the subscribe button, hit the like, and also activate your notifications, that way you'll never miss out on another video. So with our tummies filled, I think it's time we spruce up this area and get some decoration and texture done on these bolts. So I think it's time for another little montage of us fixing up the area.
adding a few leaves, adding some texture, changing up the roof a bit, we created this really cool looking farm area. So let's just run through it all. If we go inside, we have our storage where we cook up all the things we need. Downstairs, we have the farm, which is just your basic create rotational farm that rotates, plows and deposits everything with the portable interface. And it's been working, it's been working over time, and we've been gathering up quite a lot of produce over here. And if we hit through the back door, just for some decoration, we have these little copycat steps, just to create these little garden beds. And I just planted some veggies in them as well, and it looks fantastic. So I did mention I want to do farmland over here as well, but I was thinking, and yeah, sure, it's going to look nice, but we need something else. And that something else is cattle. We need cows, we need even sheep and pigs. So I might do that in a future project and instead of covering it all in crops, maybe we add some animal pens. And last on the to-do list, the mineshaft elevator. There were about two or three viewers in the previous episode that pointed out that this mineshaft elevator kind of looks a lot like Mr. Beardston's and that is not what I want. No, no. I built this from a few reference images when I googled old mineshaft elevators and this is the design I came up with. But I went to go look at his video and I agree. It does kind of look similar and I don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to modify this. We will remove some flywheels. Take out some girders. We're going to add some new supports, place some chutes, tie it all together with some girders, put in some new girders, more framed off slopes, and then instead of adding two flywheels, we're going to add two water wheels. And let's just give them the dark oak look. And hopefully now this looks completely different from the original one I did. <laughs> yes, it does. And the funny part is it kind of looks like like a mineshaft elevator from a local mine we have around here, which is fantastic. I honestly do have to say, I don't know how I feel about the water wheels turning so fast, but in general, overall, I think it looks quite cool. But that will sadly be all the time I have for today and it's been a fun one. It's been fun building this new farming area and being able to create all the farmers delight meals which I've never done before. So that's quite an achievement. But let me know down in the comment what do you think of the windmill, what do you think of the farm and if you play with farmers delight what's your favorite meal. And then also remember like subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye for now. In the previous episode, we delved right into the Farmer's Delight mod and expanded on this little farm we have right over here and build ourselves this brand new farmhouse. And on the inside, we can cook all the food we need. We also spent some time working on the elevator again. And now it actually looks something like this. But enough about farming. In this week's episode, I want to automate brick production so that we don't have to ever go farming for clay again because I do not enjoy it. But before we can do that, we need to also expand on our workshop. So I think the area perfect for the brick factory is right over here because we do have some cobble over there. I know that vault is full and we can maybe tap into that and bring it over to this area where we will crush it down into the right block that we can wash, cook and turn into bricks. But before we can get into the process of turning cobble into clay bricks, we need to solve the workshop issue because you see we're going to need crushing wheels and crushing the wheels need something called a mechanical crafter. So you need to build a mechanical crafter and you use a big recipe to create cr crushing wheels. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to start by expanding our workshop. So what I was thinking is if we go in over here, we can just create a little basement going downstairs and we can build a whole new workshop underneath the existing workshop. So I think I need to go ahead and just clear out that area and see what we have to work with. So what seemed like a few seconds in those two clips was actually quite a while. And what we have now is this little staircase that runs down into this basement area that opens up quite nicely. And I went ahead and I marked out a few locations where I think we can put contraptions. I do however think before we add any of the contraptions, the machines, we really need to maybe decorate this area just to see exactly what we have to work with.
so before we take a look at what the workshop expansion looks like i forgot to show you guys this so between episodes i did go ahead and clean up the basement of this area and made it look a bit more presentable and just look at that that looks so cool we've got these areas converting i see they just finished and we've got all our crops i added a second crop plot that's working and i added some sugarcane on the side so we're growing sugarcane passively we'll turn that into a form at some stage but this area looks so much better and what's happening here is what i'm trying to duplicate in the workshop area except i changed out the granite for bricks and the ceiling i'm going to do more or less the same thing so as you enter this room we've got this little andesite copycat panel wall in just to act like a little bar barrier but this is space this is what we have to work with and i still need to do the roofs but i thought i would rather put in the machinery the contraptions first and then see where all the power distribution goes and then i'll fix the roof area itself and same with the smelting cooking area okay so i changed it up a bit i made these niches a bit deeper to match this one so it's all the bigger ones and then i also went ahead and labeled so a vi said crushing wheels can maybe go in this area and this is where we do our crushing the autocraft i want to put here at the bottom then we've got the encased um, casing maker. So if we have to make and the side casing or any of those, that can happen here. This space, I'm not really sure. Are we going to make speed controllers or are we going to make train tracks here? So I'm not really sure. And this area is the washer, smelter, the horns, and the cooker will go into this area over here. So I think what we need to do is start with the crafter. And how we do that is we build the cra mechanical crafter, which is one electron tube, one brass casing, and a crafting table. And we need enough to make the pattern, which is in a 5x5 five five grid, three on the four sides. And we just fill in the center. And that recipe, like I said, electron tube, brass casing, crafting table. And we're going to say we need to make seven, because that will give us 21 in total. Three at the bottom. And then you'll go three on this side three on this side and then three on this side and then you just fill in the center and that is the pattern but our big goal is to turn all of these to make sure they face into certain areas so this one's going to face into the barrel and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn this one to face that way this one that way and then all of these we're just going to face into each other like so and just like that our craft has been set up so you can see everything feeds down and then from the down position, oh, that's what, this one's wrong, it will feed, these will feed into the center and all of that will go down and will all feed into at the bottom there. And right over here, we can feed some power into it because you won't be able to see this area from the outside. So what I do think I wanna do is speed this thing up. So we'll place down our rotational speed controller right over there. We'll have a shaft running into that. And then what we'll do is we'll add our bigger cogwheel on top. And let's just speed this up to, let's say 64 for now. I think that's a decent amount and then from there we're just going to run our shafts over to this side and it needs to be in line with this which is perfect we'll do a little small cog over there we'll bring those shafts back and then let's just turn one of our vertical gearboxes into a normal gearbox and just like that advancement made automated assembly and this in theory should work I did a little bit of decorating and now we need to see if this really works so what we need to do is in the center we put down a stone block surround that with four wooden planks and right round we're gonna add our andesite alloy and if we do this right it should start crafting there we go and into the barrel it created our first crushing wheel and this is why we had to expand the workshop because we're going to need crushing wheels to make a clay farm to make a brick farm but i think before we get ahead of ourselves let's quickly add a few more contraptions to this area i think it's time we do something with our brand new crushing wheels and what i want to do is i want to create a little area where i can crush items and we get it delivered into that barrel over there on top of that we're going to have to do maybe an andesite funnel pointing in then we need to do our two crushing wheels right about there which is fine and then we need to do an input which is there and just a little brass funnel pointing down so what that should do is and i think that's um at the right height it should only deliver one stack and once the stack is done it should give the second stack which should work quite nicely but now we need to power this thing and i decided to bring the power out through the roof and i think how we need to do this is maybe run the power into this area over here and we'll also do the same on the other side so 
if we do that, like that, and if we can just remove this one, we can just add a normal gearbox right over here. And here at the back, we've got the power coming through, so we can just add it in a vertical gearbox over there, bring the power down all the way to over here, another vertical gearbox, and then we're going to do normal gearbox. And we're just going to do that. And that seems to be turning the right way, which is perfect. And we're going to come over this side, another gearbox, and that's turning the right side, right way as well. Okay, so I had to change the design up a bit and bring this barrel down one, otherwise it didn't work. But if we now, in theory, chuck in 32 gravel, uh, cobble, it instantly went out. And we already had 64 in there. But we can just give it a bit of time, and then it should all end up in here. There we go. 32 gravel. So this is working as intended. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the last contraptions off camera and I'll bring you guys back once they're done and just show you what all we add to this area. So while I'm pondering some new contraptions to add to this location, I thought about asking you guys, subscribe. You see, a lot of you are watching, but only 8.8% .8 of you are subscribed currently to the channel. So go on, click the subscribe button. I know you want to. So sometime later and we've got everything in here that I think I want to add at the moment. We've got the crushing system and the crafter as seen. Then we have this little contraption which is quite neat. You add your um, material you want to case with up there and you add your logs over here. And it automatically makes your casing like andesite casing or bronze or what, whatever. That will do that there. And then this area is still empty. And over here we just have all the different smelting types. And I've done a bunch of these designs. But this is a design I actually saw Mr. Beardston use. And I thought, well, it works. So why not? So I just used that. I just changed up the design. Made it a bit my own. But it works on exactly the same principle. The only difference is I slowed my machine down instead of 16 rotations all the way down to 8. Um, because I just found that sometimes items would seep into this barrel. Well, now that our workshop's been working overtime and I was able to create those crushing wheels, we're ready to start the next phase of the project for today. And that is the automated brick workshop or factory, whatever you want to call it. So I've done quite a lot of preparation work. I cleared out this area, flattened it out. This wall still needs a bit of work, but I marked out where I think I'm going to do the design. So something in this area and then something in this area, just to give it a bit of height on the side as well. And how I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to tap into the cobble from this factory. And if we go in here, I already added a vault in here and it's got about 2000 cobble in it. And I will increase this, add maybe another cobble generator or two down there. But for now, this will have to do. So I think we should just jump straight into getting the first part done, which is the area where we're going to store our cobble and turn that into sand. Just like that, we've got a structure in here, and this is the thing that will take all the cobble coming in from the cobble generator down there, bring it in, crush it all down, all the way to sand. And if we hop up here real quick, you will see we already have 12,000 sand, and that's why this machine currently stopped, because I do have this threshold switch on here that says as soon as it reaches 50% of the storage capacity, switch it off. So let's, for argument, just make it 55%. Then you'll see it will give it a few seconds and there it starts up again so now automatically it will start taking the cobble 
dropping it down, grinding it down once to gravel, and grinding it down a second time to sand, and it will get rid of the flint and store all the other goodies in here. So now it's time to get all of these items washed. So what we're going to do is from over there, we're going to pull out the existing clay that we get from the crushing process along with the sand. And we're going to bring it over, put it into a storage system and put it through a, a bunch of processes here. So first of all, we're going to need a vault over here. And this is where we're going to have our items come in from above there. From here, we're going to go out. And then we're going to do another vault right over here i think is a nice spot and then we're going to do another brass funnel on these two and what we're going to do here is this one we're going to put a filter on it says only accept clay balls so the clay balls that come from there will automatically already enter in here but the sand will stop right here and it will get washed first and when it wash gets washed it would could turn into clay balls and then we'll go into here after this one we're going to continue past again and we're going to leave another gap open like that so right about here we're going to do this again and what's going to happen here is here we'll have a lava encased uh, encased fan with a lava source and we will be baking those clay balls and turning them into bricks so we'll have a brick filter on this one over here so only bricks will enter into this area and then after we've done that we need to come past this again and on this part over here, we're going to add ourselves a little basin. And I think if we do this, we should be fine. And then we can just do a funnel that accepts all the bricks into this one. And on this side, we'll put another funnel that will only allow bricks to come out. And that's basically it. That's it for the system. So all we need to do now is just add a storage system way on this side and just repeat this whole process one more time okay so i just moved it all up one just to make it a little bit more compact oh yeah i did some funny business but i will explain that nearing the end and before we add the second part what we need to do here is right here at the back we're going to come out and we're going to put some andesite casing like this because that's the area we need to wash right where that funnel is and on this one, we're going to do the same, but this one will be lava that bakes it. But now we need to add encased fans. We're going to do one over there, one over there, which will just be doing the washing and the, the baking. But what I also want to do is to power these, we're just going to add a water wheel underneath. So once you dug down six, you put down your water wheel, a solid block over here, water on the side, and that will start turning this whole contraption that block right underneath the belt will be the item we use to wash or cook with the fans will go in this little void over here and that leaves us enough space to make sure that we add everything to make the fans blow the right way so with a bit of gearboxing and routing we've got these two fans blowing upwards and that fan over here blowing over to the side so the first area will be washing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a little leaf trick we're going to put two leaves there and then let leave there and we can actually waterlog these without the water flowing away and now all we need to do is we just need to fill in these blocks i would like however to say thank you to tyra law i watched one of her tutorials and in that video she used the trick of putting a single water wheel with the encased fan on top and water to blow from the bottom up and i thought that was just genius so what i obviously did is i just took that idea adapted it changed it a bit to suit my needs and i also added a second fan over here but i will link tyra law's channel down in the description go check out she's an amazing create content creator so i'm quickly going to clean up this area also dig another hole power these fans and get these things going and then i'll bring you guys back so currently everything's powered everything seems to be working the belt can work as soon as i put on a gearbox but i want to wait first but what i want to do is now i want to add funnels to this area over here and we're just going to go up and i'm going to start the funnels going down and in there and if we right click with a wrench we should see items go down yeah so we see items going into the vault and currently it's only sand but that will take out all the items it will take out sand and clay now for the moment of truth let's see if we add another gearbox right over here that should start turning items should start coming out and we've got sand getting washed we've got clay getting baked there we go that worked let's just chuck these bricks back there 
and we've automated bricks finally and just like that we reached our goals we automated brick production and now we can start building a lot more bolts and we expanded our workshop and i just think everything is looking so so cool in this world so what do you think what do you think of the automated brick farm do you like it or do you like the addition to the workshop better let me know down in the comments and also do remember like subscribe and i'll see you all in the next episode bye for now in the previous episode we finally expanded our workshop into the basement where we created this awesome mechanical crafter and we used that to make crashing wheels and we also filled this area with a whole lot of other contraptions we then made even more crushing wheels to crush some cobble all the way down into sand and clay which we then washed baked and compacted down into bricks but in this episode we're going to use the mechanical crafter to help us fly we'll also be addressing the never-ending wood shortage we have by clearing up the area up here on the mountain and installing a big old tree farm so the first thing i want to do is address the flight issue because you see every time i jump I get hurt so what we're going to do is we're going to look at getting ourselves one of the create jetpacks and there's quite a few to pick from so if we just go into jei and type in jetpack we can go copper andesite or brass and i think i'm going to go all the way for the brass one from the get-go and to do that this is our recipe so everything's quite standard got the brass we've got the cogs we've got fans we've got the andesite but the steam engine the steam engine is really where where it's at so we're going to have to follow this process where we take a brass sheet send it through these contraptions to get a steam engine and we have to send it through three times before we even get the steam engine so what i think i want to do is just quickly set up this little contraption over here so we're going to just set up something temporary right in this area so let's just rip out that put in a vertical gearbox just so we can get the power coming down all the way to ground level and i think what we're going to do is we're going to add a gearbox over here and just do some shafts running along like this okay and it's going this way which is perfect and then what we do is on top of that we just add a four deployers so it's one two three four and we can just rip out this again and i do think this is how we're gonna maybe affect our rotation on the belt so we're going to do one over there yeah see that affects it so we'll just plonk another one in to get that back and then right over here we just do a vertical gearbox and that sol solves that problem then on the edges we want to do a barrel over here and a barrel over there funnel funnel and what we'll do is in here we'll put our brass sheets and then these we need to fill in with those items so this one will do small cogs big cogs fans and the sides alloy and if we then now put one sheet in here, because we only need one jetpack, so we'll let it go. It's going to go through this machine. Two. Three. And there we have our steam engine. So if the steam engine finally crafted, it is time for us to craft our jetpack. So right over here, we're going to place our steam engine. We're going to take six brass ingots and put three on either side like that. And the side alloy right underneath the steam engine. Three cogs running over the top. And two fans on either side. And then we push the button and it will automatically start assembling. And there we go. A jetpack. We crafted our first ever create jetpack. So to power this jetpack, we need to put it in our offhand, grab some coal and truck it on the floor and automatically it will all go into the jetpack. And we've already powered it to 1000 um, out of the 1600. I don't know if there's a faster way of doing the water, but that's how I did it. I just spammed the bucket. And now that our backpack's filled and on our backs, we can push space mode to fly up. And if we hold shift, we hover. And this is so cool. This is going to make traveling so, so much faster. Just look at us go. But while we're down here in the workshop, there's another machine I want to add to this area. And it's to make precision mechanisms. Because I've been making them by manually feeding some deployers. And it's been taking such a long time. So what I think we should do is we're going to branch right off from that and add it into this little cubby over here. We're going to put in a gearbox over there. We're just going to send this power all the way that way. Bring it down over here. 
have it come through the wall and i think i'm just gonna let the belt run the full length of this and we're gonna do the three deploys in the center and this is gonna be a bit difficult so what i think we need to do is maybe open this up a bit and we do the barrel over here for receiving the items this barrel for putting in the items we want to use to craft this funnel coming out a funnel going in so on this this little belt over here we've got three deploys so it's one two three we're going to do three in case chain drives like that and we're just going to rip this out again and just add another vertical gearbox right over there so now the belt's running the right way we've got three deployers and we've got collection area on this side so i'm just going to neaten all of this up and just like that it's fully decorated so let's just stock up these i did put some in to get the filters going so these are going to be small big nine ingots nuggets sorry and then in, in this barrel what you'll do is you'll add your gold i don't know how many we're making now four and once they're done you're going to take these you're going to chuck them back in there so it's still somewhat manual and i will automate it a bit better in the future but for now this is already going 100 times faster and there we have four precision mechanisms made in no time at all but not fooling around it's time for us to clear this area and get it ready for the wood farm so i think how i'm going to do this i'm going to use our mining contraption just put it down and let it run straight through clear out everything and we'll just go around filling in the areas that look a bit not so good i guess <laughs> so how the mining contraption works is we put down a rail whoop, we add our cart and then we can just add another rail right in front of that and then we just give it one piece of charcoal and it should just start going and it will now take out the leaves and everything as well and i made sure we do this on level 120 as you guys can see in the up, upper right hand corner right under the minimap and it will just go down and just help us a bit with removing some of these trees and any hills like this one's a bit higher and we don't want that in a way so while i'm over there clearing up that area getting ready for a tree farm i want to ask you guys to subscribe you see a lot of you are watching the videos but only 10.5 percent of you are actually subscribed come on i know you want to subscribe click the button never miss another video and now we have quite a big area cleared out and the idea in general is to maybe come up with the path over here have a centralized sawmill which will be the storage area and just where we maybe process some of the logs in this area and then we do farms all around the outskirts and i'm thinking more the bigger trees in this area and the smaller trees in this area and i'm going to make use of a variety of methods using the circular motion with the rotating cutting systems and maybe even cutting systems on gantries in that area but i think for now we first need to do a whole lot of planning a whole lot of planning later and this is such a confusing mess but to give you guys an idea so the granite over here represents pathways that i think i'm going to add in so this area over here i'm going to use for a workshop or refining plant over here we can do another little small build it can actually extend into this area but we'll see about that over there we've got four rotational farms which will be the single trees like birch acacia and those they will do the two wide trees we've got the three different ones spruce jungle and dark oak and then mangrove in this corner at the back but i think to make this all look a little bit bit better and easier to understand let's just quickly plonk in a few roads and get this place sorted out So we've done all the basic paths and it looks a lot more organized. They are a bit bulky. They are a bit um, straight and unfinished, I would say. And I will address that situation as soon as we start fixing up the area. But for now, my main focus is just to get the farm in. And I already started planning out this area over here. And this is going to be one of the rotational farms. So my idea is that we'll have a mechanical bearing in the center. And it will just be pushing round mechanical saws with deployers so the deployers will plant the saplings and mechanical saws will saw the trees and it will do some form of interface and i think allow it to deposit items into this lane and then from here we'll take it over to the sawmill 
at a later stage. First things first, the rotational farms. So what we're going to do is right in the center, we're going to dig out a three by three, but we'll leave one of the corners like that intact. So basically the shape. And the reason for this is now we can put down water, say over there and the water wheel in the center. And we can just close this up. And now we already have rotation happening over here. We place a mechanical bearing on top of that. On top of this, we place our andesite casing and you want to go all the way out up to there. And then we're going to take our saws and we're just going to place three saws on top of that. So idea is this thing will now rotate and cut down any trees that grow on these grassy patches. I'm going to try and not plant trees on this coarse dirt. If it if they do plant trees here, I'll just remove them and change this block out for something else. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure we have a portable interface on that last block facing outwards. And for the deployers, I'm just going to put them down right over here and here. And this should then, in theory, just place saplings on these blocks while it's going around. And now the last step is just to glue all of this together. And now that everything's glued together, we just want to give these deployers filters and we're going to tell them to place down birch trees in this area because this is going to be the birch farm i nearly forgot we also need to glue on storage so let's just do four barrels right over there and we can see it's turning the wrong way around and the easy fix for this is we're just going to open this as well we're going to grab our empty back bucket pick up the water on this side and place it down on the other side and now everything should turn the right way around so I've changed up the design a little bit. I added this area over here, pushed the interface link a little bit higher, and I just added this little temporary storage over here. So we just have a draw. So as soon as tree grows, this will harvest, it will come around, it will kissy kissy up there, and all the logs will fall down into this draw. I just need to set this as a birch filter, otherwise it will also get rid of all the saplings, which we do not want at the moment. So with this one farm in, I think it's time for us to add the other three in the other three spots. So let's quickly do a little build montage. And the rotational farms are going and they're doing really really well and we've got acacia oak birch and cherry blossom growing but now we need to expand into this area over here and get the next set of trees growing and what we need to do is create a system down here that will run back and forth and to do this we're going to be making use of a gantry system so what we're going to do is i dug out these little coves in this area we will add our little gantry we will run it all the way along here We'll put in the gantry itself and from there we'll just go up with an underside casing and up another one to ensure we're on top of this level. And now what we need to do is we need to cut down all the trees in these lines and we want the deployer to only deploy the tree saplings in a certain area so we can guarantee that we at least get some more saplings. So we marked it off with this tough block over here. Deployer will go, it will place saplings here and it won't place anything here, allowing for more leaves to ensure we get all the needed saplings. So what I'm going to do is first run a temporary line all the way through and then from this side we're going to add our mechanical saws just like this but now we need to remember because it's running on a gantry system it's going to be returning so we're going to need saws on the back end as well and then we're just going to place deployers on those blocks like that those blocks like that facing forwards so and now they will place down saplings whenever they move forward so we're going to do it on all three and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue this whole contraption together using barrels. That way we've got maximum storage because we're going to be getting a lot of saplings and sticks as well. And that should be it for the whole system. We've got the deployers, we've got the saws, we've got the storage. And all we need now is the redstone interface. It's the wrong way around, so we'll just turn it. And that's it. But before we can put the system on go, we need to make sure that it has some way of 
heading all the way down there and returning again so we need to do some create redstone bits all the way down here and with this redstone contact we're going to make sure that when it reaches this point it should receive a signal and give out a signal to ensure that it changes direction and moves back to the other side and the same as when it reaches the side like that on the back of this contact we put down a redstone link and on this one we'll also do one and these two will all both be transmitting and over here at the end we'll have a gear shift and right here next to the gear shift we have a power toggle latch with a redstone link and this one we'll set to receive so all three of these need exactly the same signal so what we're going to do is blue is going to be plank and red's going to be barrel and at the end we'll just add a clutch and we'll use this later on to also be able to turn this machine off but if we connect this now and there it goes it's coming all the way down the side and once it reaches this point it should give out a signal and there it goes back so this machine is working and i'm really happy about that so next thing we need to do is get in the saplings so I just stopped it temporarily midway and what I want to do is just fill in the sapling. So I want the spruce at the far edge so it doesn't create pots all anywhere on the roads. Might create some on this area but it's fine. So we'll do spruce over here. And then in the center ones we can do jungle. And the last ones should be dark oak. So now we can power this back up again. It should go and it should start planting the saplings. There we go. And that's just going to run back and forth. And as the trees grow, it should harvest them. And when it comes back to this point, deposit it all. I did remove the interface for now, just so we can make sure we first get a bunch of saplings in this area before it just deposits everything in here. So I'm going to clean up this area, build a second one of these over there for the mangrove farm. And we now have the mangrove part in and I might rework the spacing a bit. It works. It currently does work. But I think we can fit in maybe one more per line. And we already got two stacks of mangrove. So this is my take on a tree farm. And I do think some of it works. This needs a bit of working on. And I might even refine it, change up the design a bit. I'm not sure. I'll have to let it run a bit and see how efficient it is. But this tree farm, this has been giving me so many things I need to solve. Like, for example, I had to change this because the interface got stuck on some of the dark oaks. And this is the latest one. I have a birch tree that grew all the way at ground level and it created all these leaves. And because we don't have saws, the machine stopped. So this is another one that I might have to tinker with a bit and just improve on just to make sure it works without me having to be here to babysit it. But like I said, you can see there's quite a lot in there. These over here, they're working really well. This is your standard rotational farm. A lot of people use these and it can be expanded to be a lot wider, but I don't think that's currently necessary with the amount of trees we're getting, so I'm happy. But even with hiccups aside, I think the tree farm is gonna be really cool when it's done, but I will be working on some of those issues between episodes and also this area we will be fixing it up and automating a bit more of the processes in this area but yeah let me know down in the comment what would you do differently about the mangrove farm do you think there's another way we can do the mangrove so with our jetpack on our back and our tree farm being a bit distance behind us i think it's going to be time to call this episode because it's been going on for quite a while and i'm running out of time i do know there's a lot of things i want to change with the farm back there improve on and i might do that between episodes i'll see and then also in a future episode we will be addressing this whole area making it look a lot better and turning it into a proper lumber yard leave a comment like subscribe and i'll see you all in the next create episode bye bye in a previous episode, we crafted some steam engines, used a mechanical crafter, and crafted ourselves a jetpack. Which means we're now somewhat of a speedy boy, and, well, we can fly. We then took the elevator to the top of the mountain, where we built our very first tree farm. We made use of gantry systems for different types of trees, and we even made use of the traditional rotational tree farms. But we had to turn them off for now. I got some really great comments in the previous video and we're going to build on that. We're going to use some of the comments to improve this lumber mill and well, make this place finally look like a lumber mill where we're going to have storage for our logs and even process some of those into stripped logs. So the idea for this area is that if you run up here, you enter into the lumber mill over here, which is in the front of house. We will have a structure on this side that I think I'm going to use primarily for storage because it's more off to the side. 
and this building over here we're going to push back a bit close to that saw that we will fix later in this episode but then have like a lumber yard over here and we'll do some of our processing in this area and by processing i mean stripping the logs and getting the strip variants automated as well and after the lumber mill structures are built we're going to work on some belt work and changing up these machines a little bit and improving on them because i got quite a few nice comments and there's some really neat ideas in there so we're going to see to implementing some of the stuff because we want to put a building in this area we need to do some landscaping over here just cut all of this back and just get this area looking neat and then we can start looking at structures so this should be roughly enough area space for the structure and i think we also have most of the materials needed to build this building because we added a brick factory and that's going to make this much so much easier so i'm going to grab all the resources and i'll meet you guys back here so while I'm over here collecting bricks for a build, I thought, why don't I ask you guys to subscribe? See, only 12.3% of all my viewers are subscribed and the rest of you are missing out. So go on, hit the subscribe button. I know you want to. So I took the liberty of adding the platform so long and what I did is I marked out where the building will be. It will sit from this corner all the way to the corner there by the dirt. And I left a little walkway around the two edges over here. And I think the only thing left for us to do is to actually just get this build built. And how are we going to do that? Well, you guys are going to sit back and enjoy as I do a montage. Here we have the first building finished in this area and walking up here it looks so cool standing over here and it needs a little bit of more of leaves and stuff around here and a bit of deco but i think what we need to do is build a second one and we're going to do it in that area over there but i'm not going to do it again myself no no i've never used the schematic cannon before and i think it's time i think it's time we use the schematic cannon so i'm going to get everything ready so i do believe this is everything we're going to need we're going to need a schematic cannon that would we will be placing the blocks for us we're going to need the schematic table and then i just added two chairs on either side this will just be the inventory for the blocks we're going to use to build so what we do is you craft yourself an empty schematic and if i put it in here and then i already created a bunch but if i say lumber workshop final that's the last one and i just say click it will instantly write this to a file and what i can do now is i can see where this build needs to go so i've already marked out where so we can try and position this as close as possible so now that we positioned it now we can move it because this log is where that red wall should be so looking at this we just hold down control and we can scroll this forward and if we go to this side again just control and scroll this way and this should be exactly where it needs to be yeah that looks good that looks good one thing i'd like to mention is i know it's very close to this machine we will move that afterwards and the second thing is it won't do the frame block so it's just going to place the frames we just have to go around doing those manually but that's a minor little problem so i think i'm happy where this is and what we do now is now we go into this and we chuck this schematic in and it's paused and it's going to show itself as yeah but it's just a little hologram if you want now i need to craft another item real quick so i craft myself a clipboard and if i go to the schematic cannon and i put the clipboard up here it will do a little th bit of thinking and if i take it out and right click it gives me a list of exactly all the materials we're gonna need for this build so i think i'm just gonna go grab everything put them in the chest and see if we can get this done 
And after a couple of minutes, if we look at the list, we've got practically everything on here. This block, I don't know where to get it because it's basically just two double slabs on top of each other. So it might not place those and we'll just go around filling in those manually afterwards. And what we do now is we open our schematic cannon. We fill it with gunpowder because that's our fuel. And I'm just going to go to the printer settings and I'm going to say we need to replace solids with empties and i'm going to say skip missing blocks and once everything's ready we're just going to push play and it will slowly start to place all the blocks so let's see if we can do a little sped up video of this And we have both our workshops in so the first one on this side and the second one over here and i spruced up the area by changing out the gr uh, grass for cause dirt and just some dirt variants add a little wall and fixed all the frame blocks that weren't showing and i think this area is starting to look like a lumber yard yes sure it has still a lot of things that need to happen like flower beds and partitioning maybe a stack of logs or two and some contraptions but i think with a build like this the easiest is not always to start building your machines and getting from there to the end point but rather the end destination and then we connect everything from there to the end so what i want to do is i want to use this area as the storage room and i want to have items come in from that building into this side and from the farm in general into this side so we need to plan out our storage in this area and just fill it up and see where we go from there so the one thing i know for certain is i want to be able to turn the the farms off and i'm not going to use vault system i'm rather going to use drawers so what we need to do is maybe be able to read the drawers quantity and tell it to turn off farm so for that we're going to have to think we're going to need a redstone link attached to a threshold which means our storage will be in this area over here and then i'm going to do it like this because we've got eight tree types so it's one two three four and then we can double stack our drawers like this so we've got our eight different types of loggers over there and then we also have eight different saplings and then the same with the stripped logs and all the other stuff like sticks apples bananas and things we get as well so this will be our general storage so i know it takes away a lot of space but i think it will just make it out um, look a lot cozier so the next thing we want to do is we want to have the input on either side so if we have an input from this side running over here we're going to have it come across until we reach the center point and in that center point we're going to do a draw controller right over there which will then have a funnel pointing into it like that and on the other side we'll do exactly the same with a funnel pointing into that as well so we're just going to repeat so now that we have our two inputs that will go into the draw controller we need to link these with some trims so we'll just go down like this so now all of this is linked and we'll just link them again on this side just to make sure that whatever goes into the controller will be distributed into these four sections of eight drawers each and yeah it's a bit messy at the moment but this gives us a rough idea of what can happen so now our items will come in from this side run all along the belt run across the top into the input and go to the allocated storage areas so i think what i need to do now is maybe just start looking at getting this looking a little bit better and the storage room is done. We've got our input line coming into this area. We're supporting it with some girders. And that will then run onto that belt, distribute into the controller and just go into its right spots. And the same from this side, we have another input. So two inputs and I think it's looking quite snazzy. I do want to maybe later on add the frame blocks to this area as well because it's also a wooden structure kind of. So I might do some more storage and maybe some benches over here or even on this area. But for now, I think this is looking good now it's on to the next part so we ready to accept logs and they'll go into their areas same with saplings and all the other bits 
but we need to look at doing the whole strip variant of stuff and that's where that building comes in play so what i want to do is i want to have a bunch of machines over here stripping the different log types and from here sending it over to the storage room over there so i think we need to build this so i've gone ahead and i determined my point of entry so we will have items coming in from this side and in the end we're going to send items all the way to there where they go across into the storage room so what we need to do is get items from up there all the way down here and from here onto a belt which will then stretch across this area like this and then from this belt as soon as the items drop down we can do that we need to get them onto separate belts that will transfer them to their own line where they, they'll get processed and from the processing line head on over to the line that goes to the storage unit so what i think we need to do is we need to just first block out where we think what will go and i'm just going to do it with these logs because we've got a total of eight logs so if we say we do one two one two one two one two like that so i think that's the perfect position for all the machines so we'll process two types of logs over here two types over there two types over there two types over there in this area we're going to replace these with andesite casing so what's going to happen items are going to go on this belt that we temporarily removed back there we want to then let them go into barrels over here and the barrels will just pick them up so we'll shift click so items go inside from these barrels they get transferred onto a belt system and we'll have funnels coming out of those then they'll go straight into a saw like that and from this we'll then transfer them over to a belt that'll run around the front of this that will pick up these items and later on send them up to the storage input so this is the basic for what the design looks like of each of these units so every single one of these machines are in i added their little filters what they have to make and on the back side i added the little filter that says which log goes into which so this all should work we ended up opting for brass funnels because they've got filters just for that part and we used the normal and the side funnel on the front side because this will allow for one item to go out and onto the saw which will then output to that side but the big thing now is to get power to this thing and what i did is i actually just added a bunch of water wheels under this building again and from here we're going to just transfer power all the way up to that belt over there but we also need to bring in power into this area to power that so this one's relatively easy that will just be a normal gearbox we just do a gearbox over there and if we do that what direction does that turn that's the wrong direction so what we can do is we can just drop down here and we're just going to inverse this and just make it on the top make all of that turn the right way so that's fantastic that's been sorted and if we just then run up like this over there that's turning the wrong way so i think what i'm going to do instead i'm going to rip this out add another one of those and then just inverse the power of the rotational wheel again and that will fix that and make the top belt run the right way much better that's going the right way and that belt's going the right way but now we need to get power onto this system over here and what we can do is we can just do a normal gearbox right over here and if we add one of those see that's not going to work so we're going to need another gearbox so we're going to have to do a gearbox over there which is perfect that's turning the right way but the very important we can't just use in case chain drives to transfer power to this because we need this to try to turn the opposite direction so we're going to do a cog over there and a cog over there and now that's also going the right direction and we just now finally need to power this belt over here and then i think everything should be fine so if we do that and let's just see if we add a gearbox over there there we go they sorted so now all of this is working and we only have to do that one gearbox over there to power this whole belt and that's perfect and now we can just use some andesite casings and we can just encase some of these just make this look a lot neater you can add one over there yeah that's perfect so i'm just going to go around repeating this whole process that we did over here all the way three more times to get all of those sorted and now everything's connected everything's turning that belt is going it's only stopping right over there but i think we can maybe do a test and i've got a bunch of mangrove logs in my inventory i did however notice i never add the funnels on these and what we're going to do is we're just going to chuck the mangrove logs in this barrel which is the right one 
it go it works they go they go through they get sword they go up and then well they'll drop down there but eventually they'll make their way into the storage room which is good i'm so happy about this and i've decorated this whole area a lot more i will add a few more details but there i've got some test logs going over on the conveyor belt making their way into the system and we can see this value is actually climbing up which is great which is fantastic news but i think the next thing we need to do is i'm quickly gonna between this and the next clip just make sure i sort out all the planters and all the trees get the machines up and running and ready again okay okay hear me out i might have gone a little bit overboard you see i decorated as well <laughs> i added everything i added the storage connected it all up and it's been running for quite a while it's insane it's been going ham we've got everything we've got our lines coming in with all the stripped logs we've got our normal logs going in on that side and it's noisy in here but it's working it's working we've got these piles of lumber just lying around and i love these these are my favorite and i used the big buttons from framed large frame buttons because they look like wheels of wood just lying around which is fantastic and as you guys can see everything's connected now it's all going in here this area i think i want to change these pat platforms a bit just change them up a bit i want to reduce the cherry because it's it's clogging the system but everything is in its place and it's looking quite nice and we've got all the items feeding into this one central point and gets distributed from here yeah, into the stripper or into the storage room but i do however have a question and i would like to know what you guys feel about it it's the grass over here see currently i just left all of this grass and i don't know if it's maybe a little too green and if I should rip it out and replace it all with variants of dirt, like uh, coarse dirt and some of the chip dirt. That's my question for the week. What do you think? Do you think we need to replace all the existing grass uh, with coarse dirt or dirt variant? Or what's your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments. So that is it for the lumber mill. And it's looking fantastic and I'm really glad we got around to it. And I think it just ties the whole area together. But sadly, it's going to be all the time we have for today. And it's been a fun little project and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So do head on to the comments, answer my little question, cross or dirt, and do remember, like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye for now. In the previous episode, we spent some time up here at the tree farm, and we improved some of the tree farms we built in a previous episode. And then we added two structures to the lumber mill itself. One of the buildings we filled with contraptions to make us some stripped logs. And the other building is home to our storage system. And after we finished all the technical bits in this area, we went around decorating the area by sprucing up the floors, adding texture, and just surrounding this area with a bunch of trees to really make it feel like a lumber mill. In this episode, we need to do some preparation for a big project I've got planned. And we're going to do that by clearing out this area over here and connecting it to this area using none other than train tracks. But before we tackle this area and start clearing this area out and building our first station i think we should maybe automate train tracks first that way while we build and do all the grindy bits we can start processing a bunch of train tracks to make sure that when we do install our tracks we have enough of those and i think the best place to do that is to just add a temporary little contraption in this area we will take power from there bring it all down and we'll start producing tracks right here so to make train tracks we need a very specific contraption and to see that contraption we're going to click on tracks and it's a sequence contraption where we put slabs through a sequence of poke poke press and that will give us a train track so what we're going to do is we're going to just start by adding a belt just to know where what what goes and on this side we know we're going to collect so what i want to do is i want to rip out this press on this side and we do poke poke but because we're limited for limited with space for power to go in i think i'm going to rotate these So we give them power from the side and then we can make that power maybe come down over here somewhere and feed into that and then somehow go back down into the belt as well. So to get it go to go into the belt, we need to add another one of those over there. And I think we can rip out those. And then from here, we can do a vertical gearbox over there. One over here. And maybe another over there and then i think we can do a normal gearbox right over there with a vertical one sticking out over there and in this one we can just connect directly to that and i think we should do a clutch over here so we can turn this contraption on and off and if we connect all of this down like this 
And now we can see it's turning, but this is turning the wrong way. So we'll just rip that out and just add another gearbox over there. And now this is all flowing in the right direction. So we've got poke, poke, press, and we add funnels on top. And now on top of the funnels, we can just do draws over there. We need to add a draw on the end and a draw near the start. And can we just do that? Is that done? Okay, let me grab some resources. Okay, so I loaded up the contraption. I had to remove the chute over here because we don't have to feed anything into the press. I added a little track over here to say that's the track. I filled those two up with nuggets and this one up with slabs. So if we flick this lever, will this create tracks? It will. It's not very fast, and I think we should see if we can speed this up with a rotational controller. Okay, I sped it up a bit some, and it's a lot faster. We're creating tracks a lot faster, which is a good sign, and this should give us about 256 tracks plus. So I think we can let this run and tackle the next project. So while we're busy making some tracks, the next area I want to tackle is this one over here. We need to get this area cleared up and get it ready for a station. It's not going to be a very big one. I just want to, to be in an area where I can see it from the main workshop. So I'm going to get to some planning. So I went ahead and marked out the area where the station is going to be and it's going to be on this area. So we've got a tunnel that will be coming in from that area. And we'll be going all the way around over here and we have another tunnel on the side of here right there so what we need to do now is just rip out some of these bushes flatten out the area and then we're ready to go so while i'm across the river over there pretending to be flattening that area for a brand new train track i thought i'll take the time and ask you all to subscribe you see out of all the viewers only 14.5 percent of you are subscribed so why don't you hit that subscribe button because then you'll never miss out on another episode. Come on, I know you want to. Click the button. And our platforms are complete and we've got this lower platform over here and a slightly smaller one on top here the one down here will have train tracks running on here with a station one of the tracks will be a construction line so we'll be able to build our trains here before we send them off to their destinations in the world we also have a tunnel that leads in on that side i have not decorated and it comes out on the other side and this area over here is where i think i'm gonna add a little workshop plate on and this workshop over here will only produce all the train mechanisms all the train items we need like tracks and uh, train casings and stuff like that so that will do on this little platform over here at some stage and i made sure that if we go over here that we'll be able to add a train over here and i covered this entire area so down there is a big lake that used to be open aired now it's closed and i cleaned up all of this so this whole area is ready to receive its track that will run all the way to the mesa the track maker also stopped working and that's because we ran out of nuggets up here but that's okay because we've got a total of 6073 tracks so i think this is enough to get started and to build our track so i'm going to grab those and i'm going to just start laying track so over here on the platform i'm going to just place the first track and the first one's going to be one away from there and then there's the third and if we go straight in line with that i'm thinking we should do something right about there which should be fine. It's a bit close to the edge, but I think that should be okay. We've got guests over there. So I'm just going to see if I can connect these and make the turns. Okay, so I moved it around a bit. This track's still in exactly the same spot, but this one I moved up two blocks, and then we still have a little bit of platform here in the center where we can do maybe some construction type stuff more, and then maybe a lot of like little platform where we have people waiting or whatever. And then I also made sure that this can go into this tunnel and make quite a nice turn and i think now i should just go ahead and just connect all of this up and the other, do the other side and here we have all the tracks connected we've got this track over here connecting this one and this one together and then it splits into two directions 
this one it will head to the mesa and this one it will just go right back around to the other side which i think is quite neat now the next part is we need to right click this and we're going to connect it to over here and then from here we're just going to connect it to this spot over here and that we will change over to a bridge at a later stage but now from here we can then just go all the way over to this area over here once we get to this point just take the track all the way to the mesa and just like that we've managed to connect our rail system all the way from there all the way over here and it was a mission it was a mission and we do have a few snags where we need to clean up the terrain but that is a future me's problem so let's head on back to the base area now that we have our train track ready it's time for us to look at making trains and to make trains and a lot of the components we're going to need train casing and for train casing we need brass casing and we need to cover it with a sturdy sheet and a sturdy sheet is none other than obsidian powder or powdered obsidian with a squirt of lava on top of it and pressed two times so i think down here again we're going to do another temporary little farm and we're just going to pull this over to here i think and then we can do another little track running like that to there and we need to do squirt the lava on which then i think we should do right about here and then we need to press and press and that's how that's going to work i do think however we're going to turn these around again and we're just going to angle some power over here by doing this so we've got that running like that and then we can take this and run this across to about here where we can just connect it with a gearbox now that automatically if i flip this lever over stresses the entire unit okay so we're gonna have to maybe tap into this power earlier so let's see what we can do about that okay so that should have that should solve that problem so i just moved over the clutch to that area and i added a secondary clutch over there and now we can just do this maybe like this and that's turning the right way which means all of this is perfect now we can just add a draw over here because we need to accept those items and then also we need to add maybe a draw right about here because we need to send out the items let's move it up one let's do it over there and then we could just do our two funnels one for pulling out one for putting in and now we just need to connect this lava to a tank okay so what we're going to do is we're going to place a cog right over there we're going to add our lava tank right there and then we can place our pump right over there with our pipes running from there over like this maybe and now that should automatically pull the lava from there and put it into the spout so i think i'm gonna get everything stocked up and then we can turn it on and see if it works okay so i modified the system i turned the pump around to directly face into the spout and i just added an item drain in this area so what i'll do is i'll chuck a bucket and that should empty into the drain itself and now if i am to throw powdered obsidian into here and we turn this on this should start making sturdy sheets and just like that we automated sturdy sheets it's not 100 percent automated because i still need to stand over here and chuck out lava buckets and just like that we finished it all and we have a total of 64 sturdy plates where it should be enough to get us ready to build our first train and maybe a few extra things and i've gathered up a bunch of resources and i think it's time we build our first train it's not going to be a very big train it's not going to be a very beautiful train but it's going to be our first train and i'm super excited about it okay so first things first the track here in front i want to make the station track so whenever a train comes by it stops and we can see it from the base location and then what i want to do is the track at the back i want to turn this into my construction so whenever i build a new train it will be built on this track over here so right align this course dirt is where i think the platform should end so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to right click over here and then for now i think we should hide the station maybe in the wall we can always change it and i'm just going to place that right there and that's going to be our little 
station point and i will see to making a way to get into there a lot easier in the future but for now that's it so, and what we're going to do is we're going to click create new train and automatically that activates this area now that we're in assembly mode we need to build this train so what we do is we grab ourselves a train casing we push alt and now we can see all the different styles and we're going to do that like that and right behind it we're going to do the second one and this is going to be the size of our actual train and then over here i want to go for a single railed one and i think i'm going to do this one and we're going to do there and more or less here maybe for a little wagon yeah that's perfect so that's that's the the general idea for trains so we've got the main steam engine in front and we've got this one at the back so first thing i want to do is right above over here i want to push a shoot like that and then into this we'll connect two shoots like that and over here we're just going to do deep slate and deep slate and we can use these frame blocks over there like that and then we're going to add these over here and that so that gives us that typical nose for a train that looks like a little scraper then i think we go girder girder and then i love the idea i see a lot of people using these because it gives that round body shape so i'm going to do one over there and i think let's pull back maybe three more and then let's add a frame over here one frame over there and then i think we can just do those in black deep slate polished deep slate and we can just bring this over like this and i think maybe let's do another one over here like this also in the deep slate trap doors and the trap doors over here will just hide that wool because if we put this on the wool on the light gray wool it actually creates light gray smoke and then this one and this one also needs to be in the deep slate material and we're going to turn this into brass which i think looks so much better now we need to do the rest of the train For the carriage part of this we're going to do just something very plain and simple like this and then to make sure we've got enough space in here we can just do this the same little trick we used on the elevator because now this allows for a lot more movable space in here i'm going to do the train seat over there and we can just cover this with a carpet like that add a little controller so we can control the train and then to finish it off we're just going to do these in brass and then these two we do in glass so we actually have windows to look out every train needs doors and then trains usually have these little weird thingies on them and this is our little train and it is the funniest looking thing ever uh, we do however need ladders so we can get in here but not only is it funny, it is so freaking cute. <laughs> I do think this is my favorite thing I've built in this world so far. It's just so, so cute looking. Ooh, I did make one of these. There we go. Yeah, that is fantastic. Okay, well, we've got a little starter train and this will be the engine for our construction train. And I call it construction train because I would like to have a train with one wagon for now that will have storage on it but maybe expand it so we have multiple wagons with different things so whenever we have to travel to an area where we have a big project going we can load up this train and then just take it there so that's the big idea with all of this so i think i should get working on that little wagon over there and for that i think really quick build montage <laughs> This is our complete train it should be completely glued together and everything it's completely built but what we need to do now is right click on this and say assemble train 
and we got it we got it on the first try we got it all re ready and this train's going to need names so i do not know what to call it so i'm going to call it thomas for now but i'm going to ask you guys down in the comments let me know what should we call our little construction train um come up with something creative you guys have been giving such cool names and let me know but apart from that we need to now take this out for a test drive so we're going to take it all the way to the mesa and what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on seat I'm going to click on control I'm going to click on a five and here we go this is so cool can't see a thing there but that will just continue straight over now and now we're going to just go all the way to the mesa where we'll put down our next station And we made it to the mesa we currently have no station here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to temporarily put down a station and let's just say right over there and right over here so if we approach it and if we push space it should park and this is us in the mesa at the station over here i know it's not a lot going on right here but in the future i hope to have something big in this area well, this will sadly have to be it for this week's episode. It's been a bit of a different episode with all the building and getting into trains. And I have to say, I think this might have been my favorite episode by far because trains in Minecraft, they're so, better than, so much better than minecarts and I love them. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I do appreciate every single one of you. And if you haven't done so yet, click that like button. Do subscribe if you're not subscribed and head down to the comments and give me a name for this majestic construction train. Till next time, bye for now. In the previous episode, we cleared some bushes, flattened out this area and built our very first train tracks and, of course, our very first little train. We then laid some tracks all the way from our starter base area, all the way to the mesa biome, where we will be turning red sand into gold nuggets and even some dead bushes. But before we can start with today's project, we need to gather up all the resources we're going to need to create this gold farm and also we have a train to name. As always, you guys came up with so many cool names, but I have to admit there's one name that really stuck with me and I'm, I'm loving it. And I just want to give an honorable mention to the MB Express. It is the most liked name and it's not going to be forgotten. No, no. I just think the MB Express will work better for a train I've got planned in the future. So that's why this train, we're going to go with the name Bugsley as given by the Abominal. So let's head on over here. Let's just enter this and say Pugsley and there we go so this is our new train Pugsley <laughs> it's fantastic and like I said the MB Express name was the highest voted one but I'm not going to give it to this train no no I've got an idea for a future project with a future train in mind and that train will be the MB Express so thank you for that recommendation as well well, I do believe we have all the resources required to start this big project. So let's jump on into our train and head over to the Mesa. So we're currently in the Mesa in the location where I want to build the gold farm. And my general idea is to have the first phase of this farm maybe built into this mound where we export into the second phase, but somewhere over here to the third phase. And then just have this track run up against it make a turn and come back again so i think what i need to do is maybe do a bunch of planning mark out where i think what builds need to go and then we take it from there a lot of planning later but i do think i've got everything in here that is needed and that also means the train station is going to change a bit i want to have the train come in stop over here and then you can get off and from here you walk into this area we'll fix all of this but if you walk into this area i want this to be like a big courtyard we'll maybe do some trees but i want it to look like a, a mining town but then the whole process will happen over here so over here we'll have like a mine shaft type entrance where we have cobble cobble generators in there the cobble will come out into the first process which is the crushing of cobble to sand and then from here we will go into our first big storage buffer which will be sand clay and flint i won't be keeping flint in the vault itself i will do like a little 
chase down here or something a draw that has some flint in it but the race gets voided then from here we go into a second buffer which will just be the sand and clay and here we have the big processes so the first one will be washer to convert the rest of the sand to clay then we'll have mini buffers in between and then over here we'll compact clay balls to clay blocks again mini buffer and on this side we'll do the smelting of clay to terracotta and then from the storage buffer the terracotta will move into a crushing system again that will crush terracotta to sand finally wash that to get some golden bushes and then we'll have the storage of that so i think what i need to do is maybe just prep the area a bit more get some digging done in this area so we can fit our cobble farms in there and also a bunch of digging underground to make sure we've got enough areas and spaces for water for water wheels to power this area because we're still gonna stick with water wheels for now so while I'm over there pretending to prepare this area for a new project, I thought I might take the time to ask you guys to subscribe. You see, out of all the viewers, only 16.6% .6 of you are subscribed. Come on. I know you want to click that button. Click it. Don't miss out. On the surface, it doesn't look like much has changed. We covered up some of the holes, but the true, true work that's been done is if we go into free cam and we go underground. We prepared this area for the cobble generator. We've created some long water tunnels for water wheels. I made them extra long. We might not even need that much, but rather longer and we have the space if we need to expand. So this is the area we're going to use for the cobble generators. And what I want to do is I want to create a cobble generator that has its own little storage underneath it but it also flows over to the next one and the next one before it goes to the big buffer over there and we're going to use more or less the same system we used for the iron farm and it's going to look something like this so we're going to have a total of what's that three four five six and on top of those we're going to do hoppers and the hoppers will feed into these vaults whenever blocks are broken on the sides of these hoppers we're just going to place some stairs all the way through and on the other side as well and then on top of the hoppers we're just going to do cobble and then facing into these cobble blocks we're just going to do our drills and it's six per side just like that and six on the other side and running into these drills we're just going to use our in case chain drive with this one pointing down and the same on the other side and that should be that part done now what we need to do is we need to place a bunch of trap doors on the sides and this is just going to be to keep the water in so we're going to do that to keep the water in but the middle two we're going to add two extra trap doors and these are mainly for the lava so let's just do four again and then also you can also do four at the bottom over here with the two over there for the lava now if you flip all of these up you should have more or less this shape so it's a two by eight a two by four and then a two on the top over there and before we add in the lava and close these up we're just going to add some water in here and with all those water logged we can just do stairs on top of these drills just like that now on top of the these cobblestone blocks we can just add our lava and with that lava place that should actually be the entire farm done now we just need to get water in here and i like to just use the gearboxes over here and over here we'll just rotate the gearbox and that one will just be to power the belt that runs between the two farms so we're just going to use the same in case drives that we have over here to power the next set of drills for the next farm so that makes it all very very easy but i think before we continue maybe let's hook up this farm over here just to make sure everything's perfect and everything's running so as you can see barely barely done there i added some water wheels i also did a rotational speed controller put that up to 128 and this thing is running and i also added the first little belt over here and what this will do is we'll actually have a second vault running over here for the second cobble generator 
but we'll just have this pulling out and putting into that so we have a bunch of overflow buffers and this thing is currently running only at like i said 128 so we might try and ramp it up a bit i don't know if it's going to be able to pull three cobble generators with the water wheels we have but there's only one way to find out and that is to build the other two cobble generators real quick so we've got all three the starter cobble generators in and it's very loud up yeah <laughs> but they're really working we've got a total of 7400 cobble in there already this one's empty out emptied out now and so is this one and they'll constantly produce cobble it's only currently running at 128 um rotations which i'm thinking is not fast enough we need to up that but to up that we're gonna have to expand the water wheel area because this thing is chowing power but for now that will have to do so i think next step is getting this up here and getting it into the crushing system which will crush it down from cobble to gravel and from gravel to sand and then we can also add the storage module over here so i think the first thing i'm going to do is add the storage module and then we'll go back and build the crushing wheel system We've got the storage all set up with the little dedicated storage for Flint. It just requires a void, up, void upgrade still, but that's not a problem. But the next part of this farm is to get the whole crushing system in. And how I want to do that is I want to expand this all the way over here. And we need to do a double crush, meaning we need to take cobble and crush it into gravel and gravel into sand. So we're going to have to have a total of four crushing wheels on this line. And to achieve that, we've got a five by five. So I'm just going to do temporary blocks over there, over here on both sides. And then on top of those, we're just going to put down the crushing wheels lying down like that. And we can remove these temporary little blocks. And then right underneath these, we're going to have to do our little gearboxes we're also going to put in shafts so we can reach the other side and gearboxes again and this should ensure that they spin the opposite directions but we still need to add power to this and our power is down here so we're going to add a bunch of water wheels again pull up the power and see how fast we can speed that up and with a simple connection like that this whole thing is working this belt's going right way that belt's going right way and these crushers <laughs> apparently are going the right way because they nearly killed me so if we chuck down let's say cobble over here 12 it will turn into gravel there, there we go and then from gravel it will turn into sand flint and clay which is perfect and the flint should go in here it did not why did it not go in there oh we need to add a filter to the chute as well okay so that's going to solve that problem so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to solve that problem just make sure all these belts look real nice and then i'm going to add the chute over here to take out uh, the funnel over here to take the items out so i did notice that the system's not keeping up with the input so we've got quite a lot of cobble coming in but not as much items going out but luckily i designed this whole area with the thought of expansion in mind so what we can do is we can have another belt come out the top and we can repeat this whole setup on top again and input on that same side over there so i think i'm just quickly going to do that and let's just see if that helps a bit in the slightest we've doubled up on the amount of crushing wheels we're using but still the output is not very constant it is a bit faster we also upped it to 256 rpm so hopefully it will be okay it will be enough but i was afk and just look at the amount of sand and clay we have and that's just this vault this one's already filled up all the way as well I also went ahead and added the conveyor belts in between that vault and the final storage over there so this area is ready for the next step in the process of this farm it's going to be washing compacting cooking and then we'll have terracotta by the time we reach the storage bin and the first section here is washing this is where we're going to take the remainder of our sand send it across the conveyor belt in front of a bunch of encased fans we wash the sand and they will all become clay and they will go into the storage over here so what we need to do is right over here run across a line of leaves i'll show you in a little bit why and then behind these we will put our encased fans that will face into them and then we do our encased chain drive like this with one on its side like that and that's basically it so what we can do is we can actually right click these and waterlog the leaves and they will actually hold the water without it flowing anywhere so we've connected up the power now that we got from down there again just water wheels 
we brought the power up and uh, for now i just fed it into the conveyor belt and this is going the right way this is going the right way but now we need to see if we add a vertical gearbox over here what happens okay so see this is pulling in air so what we need to do is i'm going to go down and we're going to invert this so it goes the other way and now it should be pushing which is perfect but this is going the wrong way but we can simply fix that by just ripping that out and adding another gearbox right over there and with these funnels it's very important to place one down and then to change this value to exactly 16 because that's going to be the right amount of items to come through to turn into clay by the time it reaches this this point over here and on this side we're going to add another funnel but we need to add a filter on that so we put the clay filter over there and now this should be working so we can easily check by just adding the shaft over there items will come out they'll get washed and as soon as they reach this funnel they should be completely turned into clay but as you guys can see it's going very very slow and that's why this has also been designed with the possibility to go and get an upgrade like this so we can add three lanes in on these as well and it should wash just a little bit faster yep that's going a lot faster and this should fill up a lot faster as well so this whole system is not very fast but it's already filled up this buffer vault over here which is not bad then also on this side i already rebuilt that same design we did over there right over here with the exception of adding these copycat panels and the reason we have these copycat panels is just basically so we can have lava in here and the lava will not escape and run all over the place but before we can get to baking the clay blocks to turn them into terracotta we first need to turn the clay balls into clay blocks which we can do the baking on so what we have over here is the system we're going to use and the first things first it has to be a three lane system because it's very very slow so we'll have a funnel right over there followed by a basin on this block with another funnel on this side and on the opposite side we'll have a little clay block as a filter and over here we'll have do another funnel which will just pick up the items again and then we're just going to add two more basins over here repeat the whole process and get this whole system set up okay easy and simple the whole bottom part of this is done i did make these filters um put out 16 items at a time i do not think that's necessary or it matters but we just did it anyway and now on top of these we need to add our press and if we do this will we be able to there we go so there's a press over there a press over there and just one on this side as well and that's it that's it for this design so now we just need to hook this up to to power so we can actually have some items moving on the conveyor belt but we also need to power these and these i want to make a bit faster so we'll have to tap into the power somewhere and bring it up here and just speed it up so as you guys can see it's already got pressing down it's already creating some clay blocks for us and the way we got this happening we just went down under again and pulled up the power right over here but like i mentioned it's going very very slow i will see if i can speed it up a bit more and then we've got that part done and then it's only the baking that is left so the baking part of this area has already been built and all i have to do is add the funnels power these belts and add the lava to those um, encased fans and just hook it up to the storage and then it will all be ready to go so the funnels are in these over here have filters to only take out terracotta and these over here have been set to only release 16 items at a time so we can now add the lava over here and if we put on a shaft back in here this should run and clay goes out and by the time it reaches the other side it should turn into terracotta there we go and that's that part done that was very very simple so this is going to slowly fill up with all the terracotta blocks which we will then send to a crusher to get crushed into red sand and from the red sand area go into a washer that will wash it and turn it into gold so i'm not going to show you guys how i built these because i mean the crusher is exactly that design copied again and the washer is exactly that rebuild over here so i'm just going to build it and i'll bring you guys back once it's all complete
and there we have the entire gold factory running we've managed to produce quite a lot of gold already but we've ran into a little bit of a problem see the sand's not coming in fast enough because it's empty and the reason why that's empty is because there's no more terracotta and there's no more terracotta because we can't keep up with making clay blocks as you can see we only have 12 clay blocks and yeah sand there's quite enough of but it's not getting processed fast enough i'll optimize it a bit more between episodes and get it working a lot better but for now i think we need to at least decorate this area a bit and make it look like something decent so i think it's time for a little build montage <laughs> And now when we run into this area, it looks totally different. I try to go for the almost a Western type style that meets the industrial era. And I think it came together quite nice. We've got all these crushes in these little structures with the raised roofs, all the vaults we try to hide in some form of or another of boxing system. And it also looks really, really cool. And instead of just going with everything wood, I did bring in the red bricks again because we've got a lot of it and it looks good. It really fits the area. And again, more crushing wheels and so forth. I did add clutches to different parts of the machine so I could turn it off. But this is what we made before I started turning off the parts. And currently we're just producing terracotta or up to the terracotta stage. And we're already up to 30,000 terracotta. So I might turn it on a bit later and just let it run through and turn all of that into gold again. But sadly, that's all the time I have for today. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed the gold farm. And do remember, like, subscribe, and let me know down in the comments, what do you think of this entire Western style camp? Till next time, bye-bye. In the previous episode, we packed our bags, stocked a little cargo carriage on our construction train, and set off on an adventure to the Mesa biome, where we ran into some locals. Hello and finally set up our little gold farm. But in this episode, we're gonna fix up this area over here, build a train station right over there, connect the main base with the station platform and construct a train workshop in this area. So the first area I wanna address is the gold farm area. First of all, between episodes, I already went ahead, started up fixing up the area, clearing it up, making it look a lot better and covering some of these big holes. And I also switched around the train station. So now the train goes in this way, comes around and stops over here, which will then allow us to get off and walk into this area. But this area is the area I would like to dress up if you would and just make it look a lot better by maybe adding a few custom trees in the background and just fixing up the ground giving a bit of texture maybe a tree or two in the inside as well and just really making this area look like it's lived in but i would also like to just show what's been going on in the background so i did stop the gold so it hasn't changed from the previous episode but I let it run a bit and we slowly started filling up some of these vaults so this vault already has a total of 103,000 terracotta in it and it started backing up we've got this one filled with clay bricks this one's filled with clay balls and now we're slowly filling up this one with sand and clay and the same with this I had got a few suggestions about improving the whole crushing system and a washing system and everything I would just like to make clear I understand that rpm does not affect the washing it's all about the amount of fans. The reason why I set it to 16 RPM is because by the time it reaches this point, 
it would have been converted with the amount of fans I've got installed. So I do understand the RPM does not affect how quick it washes, but instead more fan. But now that the technical bits are out of the way, I think it's time for us to quickly do a little build montage as we fix up this area and make it look like a proper gold dig outpost so i've got the schematic cannon ready we're going to build a bunch of trees using that and we're just going to texturize the ground and just add a bunch of details so let's jump right into it After a whole lot of block placing we finally have some progress over here we've got our little station with this little building over here and this building will become our control room it's got like a little wall over here and on this wall i want to put all the controls for the different parts of the gold farm this is just a cavity to have some redstone running in the back and if we head on over to this side the camp area is looking so much better we've got all our different buildings that you saw in the previous episode and we just added a bunch of these trees we swapped out the ground we added a few textures added some bushes and some stones and i just think it looks so much better and like mentioned this was filled up to the room and after we finished this project even these vaults filled up so that is quite some exciting news but i think it's time we leave this area behind and head on back to the main base so let's catch a train so we're back here at the main base at the main station and i think what we need to do now is tackle this area and just have this whole platform look a whole lot better as well and to make this platform look a lot better we need to do a lot of planning we've done quite a lot of planning so if we fly down over here what i did is i added this little platform running from here all the way to there and the idea is to maybe in this area do like a train station so actual build itself and in this area we can use for passengers waiting and so forth and in this just runs down into this area which will be the tunnel that connects us to the main base but it also goes out on the other side and over here i thought maybe just do like a little mini platform and then we'll have a little road with a pathway heading over here which heads up to this area where i want to do a building which will just basically be a workshop for all the train components that we might need and then we'll just decorate this area with some trees and do some bushes and stuff but i think the first thing we need to do is maybe build this bridge and get this pathway going and get all of this connected i experienced a little bit of a technical malfunction you see i recorded the whole process of me building this tunnel right behind us and for some reason my audio didn't record so let's just run through it so over here i'll still add a bridge but then you'll come into this tunnel which then just runs all the way through and it goes out on either side so you can either enter onto this platform or go over to that platform over there so yeah that happened but i think the next thing we need to do is maybe just stick it through run a little montage of us building the bridge and maybe getting some of the builds up there started and we'll just take it from there future dio here with a bit of an announcement okay so this video is gonna turn out way different than we planned at the beginning of the episode and i'm gonna level with you guys it's rainy season the rain has finally come and time for me to record is not limited but the time for me to talk is interrupted if that makes sense i've got a house with a metal roof like i guess a lot of you know and the rain is so bad that i cannot hear myself think so this episode is going to be a lot more montage a lot more buildy and i'm going to leave the create bits for the next episode so we're not going to do create bits but we're going to continue creating what you kind of see around me at the moment so i do apologize for that but mother nature does what mother nature wants and we appreciate her anyway back to the video Ba-da-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-
it's raining in game and it's raining in real life and i just thought let's put on shaders and just have a look at what this area looks like with shaders because minecraft with shaders when it rains it's just so majestic so we finished our little bridge over here and it runs across this river and then if we head through this tunnel i will add maybe a few things in this area i'm thinking about actually using this to do some armor stands with some of you guys's names underneath it but if we head on up this side we have this little station over here just with a little post but if we go to the other side that's where the biggest station is and on this side we have another station we have this little house over here and inside this nothing done yet but i'm thinking of creating some form of train station like control center or whatnot with maybe a board in that says when the train's coming or what trains are all year and stuff like that and i did not do this part because with the rain i tried to find spots to record these little voiceover things but it didn't happen it did not happen and it's a bummer it really is so let's head on over to the mesa real quick and here we're approaching our station in the mesa so let's head on around and see if we can park this little train but that's too soon <laughs> let's park it right over here and that is so cool looking and even this area with the shaders on looks fantastic we've got a little control station that i will fix up between episodes and i might even just add a little bit of path over here but if we enter into this area i'm really loving it i'm really loving the way it all came together i did remove all the gold blocks from here and i'll show you guys now but it's all block it's all backed up it's filled to the brim of resources so i might just let this run while i'm editing my video but yeah this area is looking so so cool but due to the rain and not knowing when my next little gap will be i'm gonna have to call it it's been a fun interesting episode creating this and we did not nearly achieve what we set out to do but it's fine we will do it in another episode for now, I think we did a lot of improvement to the area and I'm really happy with how it all came together. So down in the comment, let me know what station is your favorite? The Western inspired area, like the gold farm and a station, is that your favorite? Or do you like the one back at main base? I'll give you a little hint. This is my favorite. Also, if you would like to see your name featured in the tunnel, then comment. Comment on the video, like, and let me know what station's your favorite. And then, till next episode, I do appreciate you all for being here. Take care. Bye for now. In the previous episode, we built this lovely bridge over this lovely river, connecting the main base to the first part of the train station. We then set out on an adventure to the Mesa area, where we built this little Western-inspired train station and decorated the gold farm in a matching style. And in this episode, we will do some nether mining using the tunnel wall before we finally settle over here and build our next workshop. This workshop we will then fill with contraptions that will help us create trains in the future, and we will even add a little farm to it. The main reason why we need to go to the nether to do some mining, and just mining in the overworld, is this bridge behind us. You see, in the end of the last episode, I said, well, I'm going to use this tunnel to say thank you to every single person that comments on a video so what i'm going to do is i want to create something special in these niches and put in a block that represents commenters and i thought what block is more valuable than ancient debris so instead of just going ahead upgrading my tools which i will do i'm going to go mine some ancient debris that i can use but i think with all of that said let's go on a little nether expedition so we got everything we need so the first thing we need to do is yoink the roll and now let's head to the nether so in the nether we're currently at level 72 and if i look at this area i think we should go straight down and in either way either direction is fine let's head on straight down i did bring ladders so we dug all the way down and now it's time for us to see if we can get some ancient debris so i prepared this little tunnel over here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add a bunch of tracks and we're going to put down the contraption, get it going, and we'll maybe have to do a few of these blocks just to get it started. But once it's started, it should start to go.
running into quite a few lava ravines. I have to say, I don't think we did really bad. I don't think we did bad at all. I did go and take everything out of the machine and put it in the adventure backpack. And we got 28 ancient debris and then a whole lot of other resources. Um, this now all needs to get sorted into the storage system. But I'm not going to do that manually because as you guys saw, that is quite a few big stacks. So what I want to try and do is take this out. And if I place down a smart shoot or a normal shoot, do I have a smart shoot? I don't. Let's quickly craft a shoot. So if I place down a smart shoot on top of this and then the adventure backpack on top of that, does that take the items out? Okay, it seems to. But now the problem is we do not have ancient debris in the system. So we can just put that over there. And now it should continue taking it out. Basalt in, we have basalt in the system, but it's clogged up. So basically now everything will sort into it. But as soon as it stops moving, we can right click. We can see the block that's not getting sorted. And we can just go ahead and fix that problem like this. We know it's basalt and basalt is this one. So if we right click, it should start filling up again. So I'm going to let it run. So with that backpack sorted, we're ready for the next part of the adventure. And I'm holding a block in my hand that is unique to create. But you see, this isn't the only one. No, no, there are three other types as well. There's red, a green, a yellow, and a blue block. And I want to see if I can get all of them and maybe incorporate them somehow into the support area. So let's head out on a little adventure. So we have another iridium, but we need to find some of the other ones. So next up, Azurine. Crimsite. And last but not least, Okram. And now that we have our different blocks, I think we can start working on the supporter tunnel. So my first idea was, instead of just replacing this wall, maybe we should make this one deeper. So we'll rip out this. And then I do think we need to rip out these. And all these openings have been dug. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to line them with the colored blocks. And then to round all these cubbies, we're just going to do stairs over there. And a trap door in that area. And then the idea is to put on an item frame, name something and put it in there. And that will be where we save our supporters name on that renamed item in its own little cubby but i do not feel the item frames pretty enough so what i thought we should do is instead of doing item frames let's do these place cards we can put that and on that we can put the item as well which looks really really cool and then i might still do something at the bottom so we finished the bridge area and the supporter display area and i think it looks really really nice so we've got the colored background with a little stair down here upside down stair with a fl frame flower pot which we just covered with a brass block and then we have the supporter in this placard the only thing that does bother me is when you look at it it doesn't show the name like a normal item frame would so if we do this and we just do an item frame see item frame actually does that but for now I mean, we can look at it, and at the top there, it says Sandy Sparkles, and that is a person that's been supporting us the most, alongside with Is Purple. So, those are the two. So, let me know down in the comments, what do you think of this? I will add, like, a little flower to each flower pot. I do think I'm going to go with white flowers, maybe lily of the valley or something i'll just see and then each of these are a different color so every week i will add someone to this little let's call it a hall of fame and once it's full i'm going to just expand down this way and just continue down that area so if you want to get your name in this area remember do comment on the videos interact become part of the community and you might just find yourself in this area pretty soon but for now, we're going to call this tunnel done and we're going to head up all the way over here to this area where I want to build another workshop in this whole factory base of ours. And this workshop will be solely dedicated for constructing parts for trains that we might use in the future. And I also want to incorporate maybe a farm or two into this build. So the only logical thing we can do right this moment is to run a little build montage. <laughs>
that's another warehouse. <laughs> I really like how this came together so I did upgrade this path I'm not sure if I showed that in a previous clip and if you walk up here we've got a little way up here I want to expand out to this way this direction with some maybe fluid tanks or something just to make it look like a real industrial area then we've got a big door over here and inside nothing's happening we do not have contraptions yet we do not have anything in here but that's going to change in a minute or two and then we also have a second door over here that just looks out over this whole area and i'm just loving how all of this is coming together with all the different trees and you can see all the builds in the area so it's looking real good and at the back we've got just this little fence this is the old granite cave where we used to get our first bits of granite when we just started what is that oh that's a train track i thought it was a a mob then we've got power coming in from over here which we did down here we just did a bunch of water wheels and i don't mind them being exposed because no one's going to come back here you can't really see them uh so that's all good but let's head over to the old workshop and grab our contraptions that we placed down there temporarily so down here we've got two contraptions this one over here is used to make sturdy sheets uh, you put in your obsidian dust over here the crushed obsidian it gets squirted with lava and then it gets pounded twice and you have your sturdy sheet so that's one machine that needs to go and this one over here is the one we use to make rails again you just put in your items required which is nuggets nuggets and over here your slabs that will run through through it will poke poke and we get ourselves some train tracks so these are the two we need to move and i'm sure there's a bunch more that we can add to that space but let's just grab these two for now so we disassembled the contraptions in that workshop over there and now it's time to put them in this area over here and what i'm thinking is this space will be ideal for maybe the sturdy sheet machine that way if we do add tanks over here that will hold lava we can directly feed into the building and it's right here from the start so what i'm thinking is we need to do maybe the track assembler on this side so we've got sturdy sheets track assembler and then we've got some more space on this side so the sturdy sheet machine machine will go in this area and for that we're going to need quite a long belt running across with a drawer right over there and on this drawer we're going to add two uh, funnels well one funnel we're going to add a funnel right over here to take items out and then right above this funnel right on this spot we're going to have to squirt in the lava on top of the crushed obsidian and then we're going to go press and press again and after those two presses we can just add our last little drawer right over here with a funnel running right into that and that is it for this contraption we do however need to change these around so we have the power coming into a central point over there but apart from that this should be working however we previously fed the lava straight into the side over here and what i think i'm going to do now is have it come in a bit higher and then go down so we're going to do pipe pipe and i think for the time being we're just going to do pump over there with an item drain over there and we could just flip this around so we drain from there and that will pump right into that and now we literally just actually need to give this power so we've got power coming out over here and i think what we need to do is maybe rip this out add a vertical gearbox like that so we can send power up but also send it to the side and then from here we'll run it all the way over here somewhere i guess and let's just go through the wall and see what we have right about there so we'll rip that out put in another gearbox over there give that power and let's just put this block back and now we see it's running the wrong way that is an easy set and um, fix and we're going to do it just by reversing the speed of this instead of having it at the bottom we move it to the top and that should automatically fix the belt there we go so that's perfect now all we need to do is get power all the way from over here up to over here okay and in chain drives we'll add one right over there so that's still going the right direction will we be able to rip this out maybe just quickly do another one a last one on top and let's just fix that so it points the right way and then we can just do a gearbox and that should have all of this working perfectly so with everything connected the only thing we need to do now is test this machine and i think the easiest way will be to chuck some lava buckets on there so we can see the lava is draining 
And now that lava is full, if we should put powdered obsidian in here, get squirt, pressed, pressed. And then we're just going to have to pick up this one and do that. But yes, it's working. So we've got sturdy sheet production up and running and it's looking good. It's looking good. I might just add a bit of detail with some girders, but this is a good start. So let's get on to the next contraption. So the next contraption we're going to need is the one that will make the rails. And for that, we're going to have to have an output. And this is where our rails are going to go. And then we also need to add a little belt that will transport the items to that storage unit. Into the storage unit, a funnel that will take items in. And then we're going to need three machines above this. So the last one on this on this belt is, is a press poke and poke over there and then on this side we'll just have again another chest with our item that we input and another funnel right over there and now the only thing we need to do is turn these around so they actually point in that direction and now it should just be a simple matter of powering all of this so i've got all of this powered up and i forgot to add the two shoots above with the iron nuggets and that that's why all of this started flowing through. So what we need to do is pick up these two and we're going to place them right over there. And underneath those, we'll just do shoots. And then we're just going to give this hand and this hand each some nuggets. And if we now remove all of these unnecessary slabs, this should be making train tracks again. So all of this is now working and all we need to do is make this area look a whole lot better again and i've chucked some bushes on this build and we've sorted out a bit of the interior by adding a few girders adding a lantern over here and there and i have to say this actually looks quite good and we do still even have enough space to add another contraption in this area but i sadly ran out of time and i need to say goodbye so before we go, remember, if you want your name in this tunnel, then just be part of the community. Just be interactive. Let me know what you think of episodes, the builds, and just interact with me down in the comments. But then till the next episode, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And remember, hit the bell button. Do not miss an episode. Subscribe if you have not done so yet. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye for now.